Bring one, not for this one. Okay, let's get started. An Antica Conservation Commission meeting for Wednesday, March 20th. Um, we are recording, so if you're recording, please let us know. And if you could silence your cell phones, that'd be highly appreciated. Uh, we're going to start with a public meeting for public comment items not being heard this evening. As you recall, uh, recall Vineyard Wind was, was here uh, in February uh, for the public hearing. Yep, I think um, you should probably talk more in front of the microphone. It, uh, uh, right here. Oh, okay. It's just, you know, because it's the recording for the rest of it. I guess. Stand here. Um, so uh, Vineyard Wind was here in February uh, for two portions of, the, uh, of our uh, public hearing, and uh, that hearing was closed on February 20th, and um, we had uh, come before you on the 6th uh, for an order of conditions. Um, we received that uh, order of conditions uh, postmarked uh, yesterday. We got it just this afternoon. Um, I'm here because the majority of the, the conditions appear to effectively uh, reflect the discussion and the vote that we had uh, on the 6th. Um, special condition 21, which was a, a topic of discussion on the 6th, uh, does not appear to conform with what, uh, what the sentiment was at that meeting. Um, it states that prior to installation, the applicant shall provide written acknowledgement from the town and county of Nantucket, demonstrating an understanding of the work um, the, uh, the video and the hearing, the, the, the transcript uh, from this March 6th meeting sh uh, indicate that that wasn't the intent of the commission, that, uh, that notification rather than authorization uh, was going to be uh, granted there. Um, the, uh, w the language specifically that we had discussed there was prior to installation, the company will notify the town and the Conservation Commission, which uh, is a, seems a reasonable request. Um, so a motion was made to accept that amendment, um, and uh, it was voted unanimously in favor. Um, so there appears to have been a, a, a transcription error um, between the condition that was voted and, and uh, the text as it, as it found its way to uh, us uh, just today. Um, so we're aware of our, our you know, appeal rights, but we, we presume this, er this error was, uh, was unintentional um, and believe it can be corrected um, as a technical or or uh, like a Scribner's error um, without the need to reopening the hearing. So we're not requesting the commission reopen the hearing at this time. Uh, we believe it can be corrected otherwise. Um, so we ask that you take uh, this issue up uh, during other business, if possible, um, and in the context of approval of the minutes of March 6th, which I think, which I think are before you today, um, to, uh, to you know, provide this correction uh, should you see fit. Um, and the, uh, the language that we, we finished on was prior to installation, the company will notify the town and county of Nantucket and the Conservation Commission. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? No. Okay. Okay, well, okay. well we're going we're gonna to kind of talk about it. At, sure, uh, we can discuss it in uh, other business. At the end. So. It's the purpose of other business. Yeah, exactly. So we have a, even with a bunch of continuances, we have a healthy agenda here. So uh, we're going into the public hearing. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Any more items not being heard? Okay. So we're going into public hearing, notices of intent. We have a few continuances. Mary D. Starry, 19 East Creek Road, continue to May 1st. Gregory Race, 19 East Creek Road, continue till May uh, 1st. Town Nantucket, 4 Bathing Beach Road, continue to May 10th. Uh, um, pardon me, uh, April. Yeah, April 10th. <laughs> uh, Hither Creek Boatyard, 20 North Cambridge Street, uh, continued till uh, April 10th. Uh, Laz Family, um, 20 McCourt Road, continued till <laughs> May 1st. Uh, BSS Hummock Pond LLC, 289 Hummock Pond is, well, uh, a withdrawal, so we're going to have to vote on that one. That and I do believe we have an amended orders of conditions, Nantucket Island Land Bank, 63 Madicate Road, formerly 21 Crooked Lane, is continued till April 10th. So uh, we're going to start with the uh, BSS Hummock Pond LLC, 289 Hummock Pond Road. Request for withdrawal. Yep, so you just need to make make to accept the withdrawal. <coughs> yep. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Okay, so uh, the first item is uh, <coughs> second item is Jameson, 195C Hummock Pond Road.
Good afternoon, Mark Rich from Site Design, representing the applicants at 195C Hummock Pond Road. Um, you heard a presentation on this project two meetings ago done by Dan Malloy. Uh, it's basically a proposal to do a pool, some landscaping and grading outside the 50-foot buffer uh, on a property that has some history with the commission. There's currently an active um, order of conditions for restoration. I have spoken with um, the landscaper who is planning to get the planting work started this spring uh, now that we're entering that, that season. So that work is underway or it will be shortly. Uh, my understanding is that at the last meeting there was discussion of how to condition this project in terms of going forward uh, with restoration work and I believe uh, that uh, there might be some input from, from Jeff on, on that. And I don't know if there are any additional questions or, or other concerns that I, I could address if the commission has them. Well, if I recall, our, uh, our hope was that uh, the restoration work will start and that we would see some progress and see some amount of survivability and then the pool uh, proposal would then follow. Yeah. I think I think the applicant would be amenable to that. Uh, our plan is to get the restoration going this spring, do the plantings, provide proof to the commission, photographic survey, other site visit that plantings have been done and when I think that that is met some level of satisfaction. We're hoping not to have to wait through to a to a sort of compliance mm -hmm. down the line, but we do want to, you know, in good faith, do the plantings, get the restoration work underway. Um, with the one small caveat that we'd like to kind of not work, do restoration immediately adjacent to where we're going to be doing the pool work, just so that we don't have to replant, you know, it. replant it twice. Mm -hmm. But, yep. but you know, 95% of the restoration area will, will get planted prior to the start of the pool. Okay, so is that is that what this is um, right over here? This is the sort of swap. Yes, because uh, due to grading here, we're we're plant we're proposing to replant the graded area, but due to grading uh, and modifications here, uh, we propose to expand the restoration area a little bit. Now, th this is just the area between the 25 and 50 foot buffer. Mm -hmm. We're trying to meet that 50 percent requirement. We're still proposing to replant the entire 25 foot and the small portion of the wetland that was encroached upon. We're just uh, swapping a little bit of area from, from this, uh, the west, uh, east side of the property to the west side of the property to meet that 50% native vegetation within the 25 to 50 foot buffer. Because mm -hmm. um, that entire area is either currently lawn or disturbed area. So we're, we're just trying to keep that 50% that area with, with a little bit of an area swap. So, because it came up last time and you asked me to kind of explore some options, um, I think when we're looking at situations like this, this may be an opportunity to do something similar that we've done before where we explore partial certificates of compliance. And I think having a finding that links the restoration order to this one and the purpose of that together, uh, you could set milestones for starting the work here to include plantings being in, fencing being in to protect that area that's permanent and tying that to some level of like partial COC on the restoration project as the trigger because then that's something that you guys have to approve and sign. Uh, that's something that is within your capabilities to do. So can explore that further, but that's within the bounds of the mm -hmm. WPA for you guys. It would certainly be amenable to, to something like that. Okay. Does that seem to work with everyone? I think the time frame of that you guys can discuss through there, but any any order. All right. Well, is yeah. This, but the pool is not as the pool is not on this yet. The pool is not on this. I mean, I know it's drawn on here, but I, I really don't want to. <laughs> right, I'd like I, to right, that would be the condition. I don't season want to here. this pool. That is the condition of it, You're right. Can we do that? I don't want to, I, I don't feel comfortable saying, all right, yeah, yeah, we trust you, you know, do the restoration work, start installing the pool, 
Right. So that, that, that that's the, the purpose of what I was saying is you can set a milestone to come in for yeah. a partial COC on the restoration okay. work to say, All right. Yeah. When you guys are satisfied that the level of plantings are in yeah. okay. and sustaining, mm -hmm. that then that certificate of compliance, that partial cert, is what would release the second phase okay. of work. Because okay. we were definitely seeking approval for the pool as shown, but, but we're happy to live with that type of mm -hmm. condition that says, okay, get the partial cert on the plantings or something along those lines, yeah. and then, you know, Boxes checked. Now you can start on the pool, but, but we're definitely seeking an approval for for the pool as shown. Yeah. Oh, right. mm -hmm. yeah. But that seems okay. to be the most right. um, formal <clears throat> way to do that, because right. that's something that would have to come to the commission for a vote. And if it's not satisfactory at that point, you simply just say no, not and then the, the pool sits there. Um, I would also recommend a condition in this situation too that involves. Um, if there's intrusion or work done within the restoration area that's not part of that, that this permit goes away. So you have that ability to, through our bylaw, to revoke that permit. So be very similar. We've done that before as well. So um, you mean like the patio expanding yeah. beyond? Well, or the plan. They start work when they shouldn't. If they yeah. start cutting in areas yeah. where they're not supposed to again, right. then uh -huh. yep. the other one leaves. So if the project's halfway through, you're kind of stuck. Yeah. So, I guess this is kind of a silly question because you almost need a silt fence in two places in some ways. But you have your silt fence going along the outside of the property. But if we do this planting first, you're probably going to want some protection for that. Yes. Um, yeah, we can, uh, prior to the start of this, we can provide a, a, a supplemental plan or, or to staff or to the board just showing that you know <coughs> once the planting is in we're going to put a silt fence we're, we're actually likely to put a split rail and a silt fence you know to have because there's a requirement for a permanent demarcation yeah. mm -hmm. on the other order so we're probably going to put a split rail in to act as a physical barrier and then a silt fence to act as a, as a silt barrier but we can prior to the start that start of work we can have a revised plan that just shows a silt barrier <coughs> So you guys could also certainly require that permanent fencing to be installed before they start the other work. So if that's there, sorry, you have to work around it, but it's mm -hmm. part of the price of doing doing the project. Okay. All right, we worked that out. Yeah. Um, okay. Any uh, questions from the public? Okay. So we have everything we need here, Jeff, to close. We have all the required information, yes, sir. I'd like to close? close please. Okay. So I'll make a motion. Yeah, move to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abrams Point Realty Trust, 30 oh, Rabbit. You skipped one. I did? Oh, okay. Oh. Damn. I know. I crossed, I crossed the one up. Oh, well, yeah. The list is so <laughs> bad. No one noticed? Okay. <laughs> Uh, 21 Crooked Lane, LLC, 1 Westchester Street. I did a cross uh, for, for the applicant, our guest borrow. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, before you tonight with an author read, uh, with a notice of intent to uh, do work in the uh, buffer zone to uh, vegetated wetland. And the work includes the construction of um, a small structure for essentially use as a pool cabana or a swimming pool and a retaining wall within existing lawn areas. Um, I do have a, a slightly revised plan that I had, I thought I had submitted, but I, I saw that it wasn't in the packet, so I would like to submit it um, tonight, which the only change is that it removes one of the two cabanas. And um, it, this is just, I, I thought I submitted it, but I didn't see it in the packet. So the change is simply that the um, uh, easterly most cabana, which was yeah. in the 50, yeah. is now removed. So instead of there being two cabanas, there's only one. And so the project, as we said, as proposed, um, we we have asked for a waiver for the portion of the retaining wall, which is uh, slightly inside of the 50-foot buffer zone. Again, upland of an existing fence within a lawn area. And um, uh, in exchange, we've proposed that we have permission for a 10-foot wide maintained path, which actually runs into the resource area and that would be reduced to only five feet wide. 
Um, so we've done away with the cabana. The, the wall, we've looked at alternatives, but to make that, we're, we're very limited. There's a, essentially a, a conservation restriction on this property. It's a very large property. This 122 foot you know, box by this is essentially the buildable area on, on the property. And so we believe that um, the waiver is justified for simply a retaining wall on the basis of um, that there would be a overall net benefit given the 500 square foot reduction of um, maintained path width uh, along with no adverse uh, impact or effect given that there is a split rail fence that follows the 25. Um, and essentially, that's the uh, that's the project as proposed. We don't anticipate dewatering, but we did write into the application that if required, we have area that's outside of the hundred foot buffer zone, so we could just do we could um, we could do temporary dewatering if if needed. But you can see that the pool elevation is is up quite a bit from the actual wetland elevation, um, and that's part of the use of that retaining wall. Um, or, so is this, does this fence follow the wetland line? I mean, are we all the way over here, along right up to the edge of wetland? Yeah, so uh, on that part, yes, that's all part of um, previous permitting that's happened on this property. Um, so what we've proposed is that our silt fence would follow the 25. So as part of this construction, um, we wouldn't go into the 25, but that those are areas that have been previously been permitted to uh, be maintained. Essentially, uh, there's a long history on this property um, of, of permitting as that goes along with the conservation restriction, the animals, this is the horse pasture, mm -hmm. and um, so the the fencing. And again, part of that is that this is a current delineation. Mm -hmm. So this isn't where the wetland was when the fence was put in. So we're not proposing fence, mm -hmm. um, but under your current regulations, essentially the wetland is upland of where it was in past permitting exercises. It's just gonna continue. I, truthfully don't like seeing anything in the 50 on this property. I feel like it's sandwiched in. Um, there are problems with wetlands in this area and too much water. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's forced. If I may, again, I think that it's such a large property with such a limited area for, for that could actually have structures um, that we would hope that again the the area enclosed by that retaining wall is about 112 square feet and over here the benefit of yeah, getting so back 500 square feet we think would would far away um, you know any potential impact of a, a wall at some you know greater than 40 feet from a wetland. I don't know though. I mean, the human impact of a path, like habitat value wise, it doesn't do as much because there's a path segmenting what's going on. Um, and these, of course, are related to the paths that you've recently <coughs> been permitting with the land bank all walking paths all through. Yeah, I, didn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't for those paths going through the wetland, so um, but, I'm kind of the same on this. Yeah. But, I mean, it's for the convenience of the owners to put it there rather than on the, it actually could be on the west end of the, I guess there's a garage is there, where it would be outside the 50 entirely. Like on this side? Yeah, there's another wet one. Well, well the pool's not going. in the 50. No, I understand. No, no. But, it's not. you know, my point being that it all could be outside the 50. That goes here. Actually, I don't show the 50 foot buffer zone from flag B4, mm -hmm. but that would go up into that same area if you were looking at that sort of as an alternative. Well, and if the scale are, are, it could be south, you know, south and west, so you could fit it in and be outside the 50. I'm not saying it would be aesthetically pleasing to the owners. Right, and you also have HTC, so we'd have to deal with them for visibility from a public road. Yeah, but or can't you just like, cabana closer, patio smaller, 
shift it the other way a little bit. Uh, if I may, I mean, it's already, if you look at it, this isn't a full size pool, it's already, we've already, you know, essentially they would have we started off with a design that, that had a larger pool. And for that very reason, we have reduced everything and brought everything as close to the house as possible because of that, that um, you know, to keep that out of the 50. So essentially that we're down to just the portion of the wall so that we could have a patio with a flat area there. Without a wall, we'd have a grading problem right there. So we think that the wall actually just helps to sort of contain everything close to the house. What, um, what is the wall? Is it a concrete wall, footings and everything else? Uh, yeah, presumably. I mean, it would you know, most likely be, be structural. It's not gonna be that, that tall. It'll only be a few feet high. But, um, yeah, I would go on the assumption that it would be a, a structural wall in order to, you know, retain the, the pool yeah. and the patio area. Shows stone on the architectural that will be in right the right face day. of an air <clears throat> for aesthetic please aesthetic for reasons. Wall. Is this something on those, so there's no fencing for this pool? It's gonna have like an auto it's cover. It's gonna be right an auto cover or or the wall. That is that is the, it so is it's misleading. the wall. Is, yeah, it is a it is a very about. strange image it yeah, almost like a fence in front of the thing from the image from the architect's drawings difficult to see what <coughs> yeah. and i guess this but includes the cabana that you that is won't the cabana have that, we, that we took off right yeah. so is this the retaining yeah that would be the retaining wall so that's exactly correct yeah and again we wanted you know the started with the other structure in the cabana but having filed it in discussions you know with staff and understanding um potential concerns the commission would have so you know, we did remove that, but would hope that we could just maintain that small corner of the wall. Um, it, do we have any sort of um, infiltration for runoff from all this patio? And um, I have not proposed any. There is again a full, essentially in this area here, you've got a heavily vegetated buffer zone. You've got a pretty good size distance there. I mean, if that was going to be a trade-off we certainly could put in some some, some infiltrators is it um, is it flat or is it i mean i'm seeing a couple numbers here 16 18. no no the it great, slopes down it's, it's a slopes. slope down but is it it's yeah. not a huge slope well eh, uh, two feet a, it, yeah it's two slopes feet for sure two feet there's, and 25 feet yeah there's, yeah there's a few feet of That's great a, change there it's not um over 12. Yeah. uh overly steep but it, it's certainly a yeah. sloping site i mean if if yeah if we at the very most for me, I'd, I'd like to see some type of infiltration. I mean, we've done it on other projects that we felt that just the stone, was, the patios are going to sheet, especially in the winter time. It's just, a, you know, we're just constantly having this mission creep. Mm -hmm. I know. Uh, yeah. And, like, I appreciate the giving us five feet on the path, but I'm wondering how that how that ultimately is going to be done is that the responsibility of whoever is mowing it right so it would be a condition and again that's actually in resource area right so i think that there's a much higher value there to then of the small incremental area that we're talking about of the buffer zone and existing lawn further away i mean the trade becomes essentially without the wall waiver then there's no need for the narrowing of the, the path it seems that um, having a, a narrower path and less disturbance through a resource area would be a, I thought, a pretty good benefit. Put a nice little water garden up something. Yeah. <laughs> that was sort of, why does everything have to be so angular out here? I mean, there's something really creative. creative. Well, it's a thought. Drainage by all means. I don't yeah, like so it. So we could uh, certainly yeah. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm just saying, well, actually, I'm thinking the, the patio. That little area of the patio, something creative. Still sort of incorporate a, you know, something interesting other than hardscape. Where, where does that path go? It connects back to the walk-in trails as part of the, the, yeah, there's an aerial included in the really shy. Yeah. Is that pass pretty, I mean, it goes through the wetland. Is it pretty soggy or is it uh, dry? I mean, maybe that should be elevated. If, if I may, it's, <clears throat> so. Could you, you give your name? Yeah, could you give your name, please, for the 
Sorry about that, but yeah, sure. It's all for the record. Billy Cassidy, I'm the official trail mower for some of it. Um, the question I think Ernie was through the chair was, is it wet? It is this time of the year. It's very damp. Um, if we have a big storm, there, there's never really any standing water. Uh, other than perhaps a couple of depressed corners out towards where it opens up and becomes land bank property, which it, what is now land bank property used to be ours. So other than that, it's, no, damn, you, there would be no benefit to putting uh, whatever the, I think the land bank just permitted a bunch of raised, there'd be no benefit to doing that. So do you take an actual lawnmower through or you bring in like a weed whacker through? Right. Okay. A push mower, did you say? No, no. no. A ride right. on mower. Right. Yeah, I have everything yeah. from an 11 foot wide Toro to a three foot little hand one. There's a, it's just a five foot ride on that sits through there, the zero turn. Yeah, so I feel like we shouldn't we should condition how that path is being maintained. If it's like a ride on mower, I think it should be probably a weed whacker. Well, let me just say that the point of, I think what our, I'm, I'm not sure about the dimensions that are shown on the plan, but the idea when we had originally discussed this goes exactly towards what you're talking about and a ride on mower won't fit, <coughs> my ride on mowers won't fit through there anymore. Once it's reduced to five. So we yeah. condition it to be yeah. push mode. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Mm -hmm. And then are you going to mark the five feet? Well, five feet is five feet. If it's not um, five feet wide, then it wouldn't be compliant. We're going to come back in for a certificate of compliance and have to show a five foot wide path. <coughs> Would it be of any benefit to, so where do you want the five feet? It's hard to say. But where it's the Going towards Ernie's yeah. point, yeah. where it's wettest, it seems to make the most sense to me, which would be the south side of the path. And, you know, the, the north side of the path is the high side. When we had originally spoken, spoke about it, I thought we'd run it right down the middle and let both sides encroach. But your point, I think, is well taken. Yeah, maybe yeah. it's as dry as possible. Yeah. Other concerns, questions? Thank you. No. I think it's a fair trade for yeah, 112 square feet. You get 500 in return for the resource here. What? Oh, I see your point. Yeah. Okay. Fisker makes an excellent push mark. I might add. <laughs> Fisker. Fisker. Yeah, I just started using one last yeah. year. The electric? Oh, no, 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 of course. Manual. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. No oh, gas? No. Okay. <laughs> focus, focus. Long agenda. Okay. Well, it's already bad. Okay. Um, any questions from the public on this one? Please, Emily. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Emily Molden for the Nantucket Land Council. Um, this is actually a really interesting property because the history of the conservation restriction is that the commission required it way back when with a previous owner in exchange for the um, construction of the paths, which you don't see very often, but is something that you guys actually can do. Um, I hadn't seen the revised plan myself, and um, that one goes over here. It's right here. It's just removes, right just removes the... Everything's exactly the same. Okay, just Sorry, removes just that, removes the cabana. That cabana is Okay, great, I see. Okay, that's... Um, Definitely good to see. I was concerned about the second cabana inside the 50-foot buffer. I understand the retaining wall is still technically a structure. I think my only concern that I voiced to the commission in the past is that for an application that requires a waiver, and I think the one being requested is no adverse impacts, no reasonable alternatives, that the commission just be weary of uh, or think a little bit about doing it in exchange for 
a structural element in exchange for um, vegetation restoration uh, and just make sure that the um, structural element you feel you can grant the waiver for it on its own because that's permanent as opposed to the vegetation which again whether it, if it's not demarcated carefully it's hard to tell without enforcement into the future with mm -hmm. new owners etc cetera, etc cetera, if that's going to continue to sort of outweigh the impacts of a structural element so you might just want to think about as you're conditioning an order how to do that as far as granting a waiver for one appropriately and then trying to long-term enforce without being out there the benefit of whatever the vegetation restoration is thank you we do have the benefit that the land council holds the conservation restriction on the property, so presumably they'll be <laughs> watching over you on a regular basis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure you can put that in your order. Okay? <laughs> a practical matter, anyway. Got to stick around for that. Yep. Can I respond, Mr. Chairman? Please. To one point. I did request the waiver under both sections A and C for that very reason. So I included that. We had a net benefit for the trail, but also wanted to establish that the proposal itself, the alternatives are limited, and but really to get to the point of no adverse um, impact. So I, I did, I understand it'd be difficult to uh, craft that order, but I wanted to cover both, and those are both in the waiver request under ANC. Okay. Other questions, concerns? You have everything you need on this, Jeff? We do have all of the required information. Okay. Unless so you guys have outstanding questions or. I don't think there's any more questions from the commission or the public. Well, would someone like to uh, make a motion? Motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you again. Now, Abrams Point Realty Trust, 30 Rabbit Run Road. I do have a revised plan for this one. Thanks, that was my um, Once again, for the applicant, Art Gasparo. Um, <clears throat> this is the second public hearing for the dock relocation. Uh, very briefly, you may recall that uh, accretion in this area has resulted in the, the licensed uh, float sitting on uh, dry land on several tides. And so, um, as we examined alternatives with respect to dredging, uh, or relocation determined that the least impact would be to relocate the, um, the pier approximately 200 feet south. At the first hearing, um, you had asked for um, that we would, with respect to lateral passage along the beach, and so we've added a set of um, uh, seasonal steps that would go on both sides. Um, and again, we're going to go back to Chapter 91 new uh, waterways to amend this license as well. So I think I appreciate that input, and I think that that would be well received there. And then there was questions with respect to um, shellfish and eelgrass in the area, which I tried to address in the letter. There is some eelgrass along this um, the, this section of um, uh, shoreline. I looked. There's really not a, a big difference where I could go a little farther north or south to um uh, you know there's, it's, it's rather uniform um but i think again that it's a seasonal floating dock supported by seasonal pilings um and that um it's in, in considering the alternative to where it is and if we were going to have to try to apply for maintenance to that that this again would be the uh the least impact we don't believe there's an impact to shellfish resources. It's not so far out to the water that you're gonna have an impact on uh, commercial or recreational interests in, in shell fishing. And I calculated the cumulative area of the bottom of the piles, again, four, four inch, three or four inch driven uh, piles. So you're not even at a half square foot. So we're not likely to, um, you know, we're not gonna kill shellfish, if you will, with, with those size pilings. Um, so again, we believe that the performance standards uh, are met, which we tried to address in the letter. I believe this is the most feasible alternative to be able to maintain the use of this dock. And a lot less walkway. <coughs> yeah, it greatly yeah. reduces the yeah. structure throughout the yeah. resource area. Yeah. 
throughout the beach. Mm. Not just allowed, allowed to uh, grow back in, is that not? We're going to flood that. They, where they where you're removing cool. the uh, We would put beach grass. We, I think I wrote it up. The, with the, the, the vegetated section, we would just plug with beach grass. Okay. And then the rest of the other section is all out on bare beach. Right. Where the squiggly line starts. Yeah, no, I see. Yeah. So I plug. Other questions? Questions from the public? Okay, seeing not Jeff, we have everything we need to close. You do. Your motion? That move to close. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> LHGS Holdings, LLC, 15 Cathcart Road. to create um, a new beach access path uh, to through through a coastal bank and coastal dune resource area. Um, this is the only file I didn't grab either. Yeah. Do you not have the file? I'm sure no. you have it on your we have. It's definitely on there. Um, and th this is the this is the property where um, we were before you last year related to the outfall pipe from Pest House Pond. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the existing, oh, thanks Brian. Brian's saving the day um, <laughs> for a hard copy of the plan. Um, so the existing path, which this um, property has utilized uh, for some number of years is actually on a neighboring property without rights to, to use that. And then that, that's the path that has been getting flooded as a result of um, when the Pesto's Pond pipe got blocked. So you, as you're aware, we, the valve was put in by NCF on that and they're monitoring that. There are concerns with the algae certain times a year that valve's not gonna be open. And so this owner does not wanna have to deal with sort of the flooded path, the potential for algae there fact that it's on another property we had sort of examined whether we do elevate you know try to do something else there um, and so the proposal would be to create um, uh, a walking path uh, from the existing lawn area to meet into the existing path and what that does is where it comes on to his own property and that way there we don't have to do any there wouldn't be any disturbance through the, the coastal dune I worked with um, the landscaper of this property who's been working on this property for quite a while and is very well versed um, in, in wetland type matters and very carefully selected and he, he actually flagged the location of the path so that we avoided um, substantial vegetation no one wants to really be taken down you know trees and uh, that way there we can um, essentially this will be a hand cut path um, we have proposed that along the slope, instead of having to put any kind of a stairway down there, that we would put some six by sixes anchored in the ground, spaced just as needed, which I think would also serve a benefit of interrupting uh, stormwater flow from getting channelized and creating creating runoff. So um, the, we would just put six by six timbers, uh, again, not consecutively, not to create a set of stairs um, as needed. Again, we're kind of going across the slope it's, it's not uh, overly drastic. The crossing through the wetland portion is dry most of the time, uh, but I know that the regulations require that if you're gonna cross a wetland, we have an elevated walkway. And my concern is also that this is hydraulically connected to Pest House Pond in that area. So as you have um, potential changes that are happening there, that area could be uh, could become wetter over time. So we've proposed uh, a small, um, short walkway uh, over the, um, uh, that section of wetland. And that would again be installed by hand, four by four posts. It's, it's fairly short in length. And uh, again, we would consider this to be a water dependent use as it does provide access to, to the beach. Um, and with that, I'd be happy to take questions or concerns. 
You know, it's kind of a stupid question, but at the same time, not. I, I am a little worried just about the amount of path going through the dune and the wetland, although I recognize it's water dependent. Why can they not just walk Cathcart Road? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they want to, you know, stay on their own property and get to their own beach. So that's the, you know, and they have a, you know, that's, that's the problem. They have a path that exists down here through the dune. They're just trying to get to that path via their own property. I guess I'd like to see a straighter shot. Yeah. Well, if I may. Yeah, please. We felt that this actually has less impact because of the way the slope is. We picked... We picked the route, and it was not easy. It was it would be much easier to survey or put in a sort of a, a straight shot. But this, uh, if we did a straighter shot, we'd probably need a set of stairs to get down this slope right through in here. And we're trying to avoid structural elements and keep it as it's a, you know the reason it's kind of a windy path is to minimize sort of what needs to be disturbed. I, yeah. Maybe I'll see on the aerial. There's a lot of thick vegetation yeah. in this area. I get it with plants and things like that, but when you're looking at habitat value, what you've done is you've completely bisected this wetland so that it diminishes value for you know organisms trying to live there because the path is right in the middle. So if it was on you know one of the sides, you still have a large chunk of contiguous wetland habitat there in the middle, where this is literally dead is, center. Is this wetland just keep continuing on? Yeah, Pestos Pond. Uh, no, Pestos, uh, Pest, all the way over the pond. To, yeah, to, to sorry, the east, it yeah. runs directly <coughs> to Pestos Pond. And to the west, pond. it runs to that um, <coughs> Cathcart Road. To the road. Yeah. 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 Ye
was that you had sort of an entry and you would come in and connect straight through there. Yeah. But in fact, um, I think this is the, and I hear, I understand what you're saying on habitat value. I would also just for, for contemplation say that it's a, it is a fairly narrow corridor. This isn't a, you know, given that you have a path on one side and a road on the other. Um, so we're not sort of breaking up an extensive type of resource area. It's, it's part of a residential property um, that, you know, this, this width right here, I can give you an exact dimension, but you're maybe 150 feet. So like this set of, this, this particular pre-existing path that we see on here, so it's like a series of steps. It's not just a path, it's got the like- steps. It's oh, got no. steps. Oh yeah, it's steps. It's, so it's it timber, is really, timber, it's old. It's yeah, yeah. back, you know, 60s, 70s, yeah. I would say, and, you know, built steps in. Steps and planks. Right, and, and yeah. then when you get down through the flooded part, there's, there's back planks up. that get dislodged. Back and, up again, yeah. Well, I would like to see it. Um, I can see. I, I'm, I'm not doubting your. Well, I, I think that's, that a site visit might act. I think it would yeah, support the sure. case, honestly, if you feel that yeah. that would help, and we can continue this and yeah. plan on a site visit next time. Okay. Sure. Okay. Is that it's general that consensus? Flagged or will be flagged or it's already flagged. It's flagged. It's flagged. Yeah, that's oh, how okay. we, we located the flags that, <laughs> you know. Um, landscape <laughs> The landscape for brush bands. Okay. I mean, if you want to walk the flags, but yeah. it's not real easy to see all of them when they get down okay. there. But we could certainly stand on the lawn and go around the other way and look back up. Because down in here, it's much lower vegetation, sort of um, dune type. And so is it low down here? Like if you were to go straight this side and just hit this little clip of wetland? I think the part there, I, we'd have to look at that closer, but you've got some steeper grades again over in here. <laughs> And then this is fairly heavily vegetated. And then the question is, I think we'd have a lot more disturbance to get, we are again, what this owner really doesn't even like that exists right now is that break in the dune at the coastal bank where the flood water can come back in. So the last thing we want is any new cut at the dune to the beach, because that's natural. So we really want to maintain that the point that we get back onto the beach is using the trail that's there. Mm -hmm. And I think that that also furthers your interests. So it's quite difficult, I, I would say, to get back to this trail. Right, I would say you would abandon that part if that so was the, the side of the So I think Ashley's point being that, you know, if you- That's thick. That's really thick, yeah. and so, okay, got you. Yeah. And this is wetter, for sure. Like this is real. This this is actually what they said. There was some die off in there from um, boggy. Well, from the locked pipe that had happened last year. So can, yeah. so that's, so the pond came out. From yes. Into yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, any other questions, concerns? Anything that we're going to look at? But we'll let's go see it. yeah, let's go see it. Um, any questions from the public? Okay. So to continue. Yes, please. For two weeks? Uh, is it three? Three? It is three. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. Town meeting? Town meeting. Yeah, we meeting. Town meeting. So, we <laughs> made a push. <laughs> okay, so we will continue you can back to Brian. for three weeks. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah, we'll take a look at it. Okay, uh, Pennant Realty Trust, four or five. Castaca Course Way. <clears throat> uh, for the applicant, our guest borrower, along with Seth Wilkinson. Uh, this is a proposal for coastal stabilization uh, along the coastal bank at um, the two properties, um, four and five, Cascada Course Way. There is um, to the east. We are proposing to butt up against um, a coastal stabilization project of the essentially uh, very similar type, which you had permitted and set that installed a couple of years ago, which we've been providing you the, all the reports on, um, and is very, very well uh, vegetated and, and stable. And there is on this property uh, a portion of existing stabilization uh, directly in front of the structural elements. All of that would be removed uh, as part of this project and to come in and 
install the, um, uh, the fiber roll array uh, similar to um, the ones that you've permitted in, in the past. We have removed on this one based on the, the most recent permitting, understanding the concerns with the casing and the um, synthetic mesh, so that's not part of this proposal. So it's essentially um, uh, you know, biodegradable materials other than the, um, the, the duckbill anchors and the, and the cabling, which I think is again in every, uh, the interest of the commission to make sure that we can um, uh, prevent these from being dislodged. We are in the harbor, so we don't have a necessarily a, a high energy wave environment. Um, Seth has developed and team uh, you know, a comprehensive planting uh, scheme for above the, um, uh, above the fiber roll array, and we would be um, expecting amenable to you know the same conditions that you've put on these types of projects uh, in the past the access would be from uh, there's an existing dry asphalt driveway which we show uh, on the plan and we would come straight to the top of the coastal bank um, and uh, ramp down to, uh, to to do the project here and we may at the very end have to do sort of one run off the beach but that's the the overall proposal and uh, Seth, I don't know if you'd like to add anything. Uh, I think that was a good good summary. I'm primarily here to answer questions. Um, I would just echo what you said, the similar project at uh, Ken Fargo, uh, just to the east, is, is in very good condition. It, it vegetated very quickly. You may recall there was a considerable Japanese knotweed invasion there. Uh, that's been managed and um, it was nourished again last week. Hmm. So have you looked at the underlying hydrology in this area? Because this is right where there's tons of freshwater seepage that starts coming out of this bank. Mm -hmm. I mean, last year when groundwater was so high, it was flowing out of it. Yes. Um, and it actually undermines these structures from behind. I think it's structures that are um, west of this. Um, you can see the water underneath them every low tide and it's fresh and I was stupid enough to like stick my finger in it and taste it and make sure that it's fresh. So I just question if this is gonna stabilize. So um, great, great question. Um, uh, we, we are aware that there's considerable groundwater water breakout. There's a high silts and clays in the, in the coastal uh, bank and the glacial deposit there. There's uh, wetland uh, considerable. The Tupelo wetland in right. down in this area. This has sort of been right, the eroding, eroding back. We do think we can stabilize it. Um, we actually had almost the identical condition at 141 uh, Cliff Road, uh, as well as just next door at 10 Fargo. Um, that same sort of uh, groundwater break is happening there. And so 10 Fargo is probably the, the, the best example. Um, but one, 141 Cliff has a perched wetland. We proved that a, a little over a year ago. Um, and it also has actually uh, a, a channel where Sometimes if there's sufficient runoff, it runs runs down like that, and it's it's stabilized just fine. Um, both of them have stabilized well. I think the moisture actually helps um, the the plants, and because it's non-structural, that's why it, it doesn't go with it. Um, the water just flows right through the coconut fiber. Um, well, what about anchoring into that material? I mean, it's very unstable back there. Yeah, it um, actually heavier soils hold anchors better than sandy soils, um, so you know we're we're comfortable with that. Yeah, they just, they, the, the anchors, the way that they, they work, they're driven into the heavier soils, and when you put, pull back and put the tension on them, they lock. Um, so the anchoring should, should hold well. And like I said, the water is flowing right through the coconut fiber, through the root systems. Um, and these are lower density um, fiber rolls, because they're natural. You can't put as much density into a um, naturally encased uh, fiber roll. So they're not gonna last as long, um, but they, they will, uh, how long do you think they'll last, Seth? Yeah. Uh, based on other projects, you generally see a pretty pretty rapid decomposition around year 10. Um, plants are taking taking hold during that time, so depending on the weather. Um, you know, you've, you've, I think we've got enough enough projects, and I hope you've you've been able to see some of them. Actually, you have an image that might be helpful. So I'm not sure if you're, this is, this is a little rem remote. Image from Ken Fargo. Okay. This is 
down the beach a little in another direction. And you can see how rapidly these grow in. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, and that's Pac that's Pacamo. That's 48 Shimo. That's just one growing season. Uh, you'll recall the it had been destabilized all the way over to there. See so that line. So all that was one one season of growth. And this is right next door. A little bit of a cloudy, misty day, but um, that was Fargo. Um, second season after construction. So they, they, do, they go in very, very quickly. So Seth, do they still provide a sediment source when necessary? We're still proposing uh, to, uh, I believe, 600 cubic yards. That's what's in the proposal annually uh, for this, this project. It's longer. Um, and so it's consistent volume with 10 Fargo, which, is, which has been working well. We've, 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 ever since Fargo's been in place, it's, it's received nourishment in the last two springs. Uh, so, so, yes. so, so, what's the maintenance protocol um, for these projects? Um, robust fiber rolls. So, if you get, say, 10 years down, you have, you know, the upper ones would be vegetated, the lower ones may be so yeah, good question. You you can you can replace. Uh, they're they're not they're they're different than like a sand fill envelope, where if the lower one deflates, you really it's very challenging to 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 deal with the upper ones. Fiber rolls are, aren't nearly as heavy. They're not full of sand, um, full of coconut fiber. So you can, can we periodically sometimes like a boat or something will wash up on the shoreline and it'll pull up, pull one apart and open up all the fibers. You just go and really release the anchors, put the, put a new fiber roll in there. And, down again. We have a sort of a serpentine anchor system that runs from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. So we actually pull all of them and then replace that cable. So no. that's just the anchors in. The anchor points all yeah, right the anchor points stay in and then that cable locks them all together. Because mm -hmm. you really want them all holding together you know, that prevents them from getting away. Crimping the end of the cable then the anchor cable. So then you have a mat that comes out and then that's what then they can anchor back to. They can take it apart. Back and, and, and again, our, anchor, our our cables are galvanized, and so while they're not biologically degradable, they, are, they do degrade. They could probably degrade over about a 30 or 40 year period. Anyways, you put a mooring in a galvanized anchor chain, it does, it's not there forever in marine system. <laughs> and, and when it breaks down into an iron, and that's, that's one of our most common. My other question for you regarding sediment. I I think the sediment in this area is different than what most of the like Pacamo neighbors install has. So have you tested that and sourced locally what that's going to be? Because there's a tremendous amount of plays I've actually yeah. taken photographs for my students to show them the dynamic soils in this area. Yeah, there's. Um, I'd, I'd say they're, they're highly variable. There's there's some veins of sand. There's heavy clay. There's silt. You've got a little bit of, of everything in, in that, especially something this this long. Um, so we, we generally. Uh, default to the DP guidance on that, which is it recommended going a little bit um, coarser than, than, than what might be coming out of the bank. So you still want to have finer grain sediments, and those can be those can be blended in. Um, but I, I'm not sure if you'd want to be um, placing a lot of um, extremely fine grain sediments sort of on the face of, of, of an array like this, because what's there is glacially compacted sediment, and so that's going to that's going to behave a little differently than something you apply, even if you compact it on the surface. Um, and, and DPs address that too. And generally speaking, we could go a little bit, a little bit coarser with fines out of there, um, because there can, there's still fines in the beach, and they can still move around. Um, but uh, I, I think we can play too many fines in the harbor, which would be good for the grass. Other questions? down there. Uh, okay. Uh, questions from the public? Nope. Okay. So Jeff, we have everything to close on this one? I believe we are still waiting for Heritage. I haven't gotten a determination from them. Maybe Art has? I didn't get it. <laughs> Or if they're beyond. Yeah, they passed 30 days for sure. Um, 
to you guys. Just because I know you have a long meeting, perhaps we just come back to this after, if you want to just hold this for just until the end, and I'll just double check my emails. I, well, I know we're past the, the, the 30 days from the receipt. Uh, the mailing receipt is there. Um, I haven't gotten anything back from them yet, but we're beyond the 30 days then. I didn't, I didn't get anything from them. I don't, I don't think I could triple check, but I don't recall. I mean, I forwarded it to you guys. Yeah, I mean, it was addressed to them. Quite some time ago. I mean, everything else left on February the 14th. And this is held over from the meeting previous right. to this. So I, I think I'd feel comfortable if you guys want to close it. I, I think we're, we're well within our window. Okay. Okay, so if I'd like to make a motion. Yeah, move to close. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thanks. Strange okay. I don't have it. Just don't answer. Do we need slip or something? No. It's not overly uncommon. <clears throat> Loretta Lane, nominee five. Loretta Lane. There's a plan to hold over a whole stack of stuff. Accepting the mail. Once again, our Casparo and stuff will consent. We're before you tonight with a um, very okay. unique project um, for. Uh, ecological restoration notice of intent, um, which really uh, Seth's team has, has developed um, to address invasive species in this area and um, try to do some uh, some improvement restoration type work. There's no um, uh, there's no structures or other aspects of this project other than trying to, um, uh, to to make improvements to the vegetative community and I think that Seth could probably sum it up a little bit better than I could. Um, yes, uh, for the record, Seth Wilkinson, um, excited to be before you in the salt marsh restoration project. This, I believe, is our first on Nantucket. We have been doing exactly, we came up with this design about a decade ago and have had it in R&D and I, I still consider salt marsh restoration to be slightly experimental because 10 years isn't all that long in the grand scheme of things. I um, also want to mention, under the current DEP regulations, uh, this actually went through the limited, um, doesn't have a whole lot to do with, with, with your uh, local bylaw, doesn't have anything to do with your local bylaw, but under the um, regs it went through the limited ecological restoration process. So this was uh, noticed in the environmental monitor prior to us coming before you. That's a requirement under those. Um, it, it can facilitate projects where, if, if, if in towns that um, don't have bylaws, but otherwise it doesn't have much of an effect. Um, so we've been through that whole process, and we're here before you because it, it does involve work within a wetland. Um, so there's, I'm going to talk about the the upland uh, portion first, uh, which is sort of a typical um, restoration uh, of a um, an area which is shown right uh, here. We've got some upland, some wetland, some buffer zone. There's a stand of, of white poplar, uh, as well as border privet and, and Japanese honeysuckle, some English ivy as well. Uh, so we want to comprehensively restore that and then um, then replant it, as is shown, with native species. Um, we think we can stop that invasion in its tracks. There is, as you're probably aware, a large uh, NCF conservation property uh, adjacent to this parcel on the other side. We want to certainly stop these invasives before they move in that direction. Um, and then uh, the salt marsh restoration uh, process, uh, we don't get these calls very often, but occasionally folks, uh, they, they reached out to the landscape architect in this, in this instance and said, you know, the, the marsh doesn't look healthy. Um, the landscape architect isn't really uh, trained to, to do salt marsh restoration, so they called us. And um, we don't know exactly why the salt marsh is in decline, um, but it appears to be showing signs of stress probably from too much uh, uh, sub submersion in salt water. Um, what's driving that could be a lot of factors, as we as we noted in the land management plan. But we think primarily after evaluating what we think it needs is a little bit more elevation. And with sea level rise, most salt marshes need elevation. As, as you, if you saw it in the, in the field, it is a tidally restricted wetland. There's a pipe that goes deep actually under 
uh, under the road um, and then it connects. And I stopped by earlier today just to get a, a look, current look. Um, I hadn't changed too much the last time. But what I did notice is there's a high amount of algae in the marsh on the other side of the road. It hasn't made it through pipe into this site, so that tends to support possibly you know, there could be some, some ex excess nutrients. I'm not sure if that is connected to the harbor at the moment. It tends to shoal up and then get disconnected and then reconnect when it fills up with enough water. Um, so we're, we're, we're seeing signs of decline, pretty, pretty clear signs of decline. And basically what we do is we simulate peat um, by using coconut fiber. Uh, we make up the pillows out of completely biodegradable uh, materials, create a nice growing medium as described in the, in the protocols. Uh, and then just stake it down with wooden hardwood stakes to sort of, um, again, try to, you, you, you can't, it's, peat is hard, you can't you know, go out and buy peat. Um, peat moss is broken up peat. Um, so this is the next best thing. We're trying to simulate those dead root materials, which is one of the three major ingredients in, um, in peat. Peat is sediment, live root materials, and dead root materials, basically. So coconut fiber is uh, gonna, gonna slowly resist natural degradation, uh, but it will, it will degrade. Usually in an in-water situation like this, coconut fiber breaks down within a couple of years. So we're just looking for it to be a growing medium, allow that those plants to create their own root system. It tends to accrete sediment naturally as sediment comes in in the water column. If it's very porous, it's like a big sponge. It's gonna sort of naturally accrete some of that sediment, which is the way salt marsh are supposed to function. Um, and so we've, we've selected three uh, species, the, uh, the spike grass, um, salt, salt meadow hay, and, um, and then the Spartanoxin floor, the lowest gradient marsh grass. We, we're presuming it's probably going to be the Ultima flora that does the best, uh, salt meadow cord grass. Um, but just in case, uh, sort of higher strata species are, are well attuned for this, we also have some um, the spike grass and the, uh, the hay. So if you were to think about sort of the salt marsh gradation, because it's graded basically by elevation in the salt marsh, so you can have at the lowest marsh, the part of the marsh that's underwater the longest, you're going to have off to the floor or salt metal cord grass, and then in the middle you're going to see the spike grass, and then higher elevations that sort of only go underwater in the higher course of the tide, you see salt metal hay. And so all three are represented, and naturally one, you know, they'll, 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 the, the elevation will naturally fluctuate in the pillows, um, and, uh, and, and they'll, um, the, the plants will find a way to pitch in our experience. And then I'm sure this question I'd be happy to answer. Well, my question is sort of indirect in a sense. I'm floored that you can't buy pea. I thought <laughs> you could ship it over by a shipload from... The, well, the early manuals from the USDA actually said, if you want to do salt marsh restoration, just go dig up a salt marsh somewhere else and drop it in. That's literally but you want thing. sort of coalesced pea, right? You want the more of a block of pea, not a... Bag of pea. Yeah, not a bag of pea. We want that nice, firm. Thick. Yeah. 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 That was used as fuel in Ireland and Scotland for slightly different kind of peat, but the same basic, yeah, yeah. same basic thing. Yeah. So when you say the salt marsh is on decline, what do you mean by that? Just no plant species yeah. surviving anymore? A, a shift in the species that are there? More open yeah, water? We can actually see the dead stalks. Okay, so it's starting to get mud flats. Um, and, and those are the, so those are the stalks. So I'm pointing to page five mm -hmm. in the land management plan. That was uh, Altanoflora, probably just this season before. Um, so, so I guess my question with sea level rise and climate change, is that not, you know, a natural shift or progression in some ways to where this would maybe be more open water salt marsh? Well, it's, um, I guess it's a question of um, possibly more philosophical, is sea level rise natural? <laughs> it's th th what's happening right now is not natural. I mean, Nantucket was created by sea level rise. So is this progression, <laughs> I'm just worried about putting in peat and plants and maybe stopping the function of this with storm surge and things like that. Um, well, it was a, it, it was a manipulated a manipulated salt marsh historically because there's a, a drain that you can see running, culvert. yeah, mm -hmm. the, uh, culvert, right. and then also um, it shows the best. I guess this one shows it. So there was a ditch dug, and it goes you know right right up to the road, and then that goes into a pipe, and then it runs up further. So there's a drainage ditch, um, and. And so those, um, we haven't proposed to fill that in. Some projects are, uh, because most of the science is, is saying how problematic those, those ditches are from um, 
vectors for invasive species like like uh, green crabs and things like that. Um, but we thought that would be a little ambitious to start with that. So we're leaving the hydrology alone and just trying to um, address the areas that were very recently likely the, the growing season prior. They were um, salt marsh, and, and to try to, to try to restore that. So I'm not an advocate of putting salt marshes where there weren't, but I am an advocate of trying to help salt marshes survive in the face of accelerated sea level rise, which I don't agree is in a natural, a natural cycle. Well, well was a I'm, pretty deft sidestep yeah. there. I'm sorry? I said that was a brilliant sidestep of the issue when you said that, you know, delineating between natural as opposed to first sea level rise and climate change. <coughs> That's the way I see it. I, I, I'm not following that. Well, anyway, I, I'd like to see the underlying hydrology of this a little more. I don't know that we have all of the information you have in our packet, or maybe I... Yeah, you do. It's, okay. it's all in there. Have you looked at the adjacent salt marshes and the, the other little systems in there? Seems to be fun. How are they doing? Yes. Are they uh, all sort of they're, suffering? Or? They're, they're not owned by this owner, but they're they're they're, um, they're having uh, similar it's problems. Impacted. Yeah. So yeah. it's thing, it's not just this one expanding. spot that makes you think of something. No. It's behaving a little differently because there's a, there's a hydraulic restriction, and we would expect that. Yeah. You had more flooding to the to the east. Of the salt marshes over in here, and then the, the culvert is the, is the sort of hydraulic restriction that happens there. Yeah, I was like looking at some of the aerials, and it's just, I mean, you can't tell the health of a salt marsh too easily from an aerial, but. Um, from a uh, displacement standpoint, the, this area is restored. Um, will that displace, displace? floodwaters to adjacent areas potentially, or is this going to serve to abate uh, some of the... Yeah, I think it's probably going to be a net benefit in that regard because you're losing that flood storage capacity. A salt marsh is a, is a more effective sponge. It not only provides mm -hmm. capacity, but it also um, manages mm -hmm. how it's released, which mm -hmm. is one of the big functions of inland end and salt marsh uh, wetlands. Uh, and um, so, so no, I think, and, and again, there, this, is, this is extremely porous, um, like you can't, more, we grow these mats at our native plant nursery for about two months before they come out, get those roots uh, spread through the, through, through the through pillows, and um, you can't really lift them up when they're full of water, you basically have to drain them, and then you can lift them up, mm -hmm. um, so they, that just gives a, an indication, they can go from hundreds of pounds to about 50 pounds. Pretty quickly, spending their cold water. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's a big change since last time I started about 15 years ago. Uh, it's pretty that. dramatic. Yeah, well, that I don't have 15 years, so, so um, would, would you characterize it as more grasses, more salt marsh grasses? Absolutely, in there? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just uh, surprising how low it is, and just before it was quite robust. Um, yeah, I want to say I was there 25 years, and then the last time I was there, about 15 years ago, did a project down there. So yeah. it's quite dramatic, the change. It is, it is a relatively small area. It's, it's what I would sort of call, sounds strange, but residential scale. I mean, we've got a homeowner that is just is seeing what they, I think, correctly, see some salt marsh degradation. And well, they haven't told us how to restore it. They just said, can you, is there anything you can do? You know, can you use plants? You know, salt marsh species in there, that generally I don't think is, is very effective um, because you're not addressing that elevation issue. Um, that they're just, it's, it's just too low. There's been some sort of subsidence, of sea level rise, or combination of the two. And uh, without that growing medium to support that marsh community, which we know is, is one of the most productive ecosystems on the planet, salt marshes. That's why it's so heavily protected. And certainly, I'm very comfortable saying salt marsh is much more productive from an ecosystem standpoint than a mud flat. I mean, we value mud flat to make blood worms, you know, but here you, you value the salt marsh, the, the life you're going to see in the salt marsh is considerably. So have you tested for any chemical contamination or are you? We, we have not tested for chemical contamination. Um, at these residential scales, you, you are a little sort of limited. I mean, it's nice to even get a homeowner that's willing to do something like this. Um, and the studies that you might do for something, if it was a large-scale salt marsh restoration, the ground penetrating radar, there's all sorts of 
mm -hmm. interesting studies you can do. They're just not really feasible for, for um, something that's, that's of this size. The, the studies could cost a lot more than the restoration, and the restoration is not an insignificant investment, actually. So to answer your question, no, we have not. <coughs> and um, how about the removals of the invasive yeah. plants? Mm -hmm. How is that to be Techniques. Uh, basically, the cut. So with poplar, which is probably the largest by biomass, um, we actually uh, um, inject a very small amount of herbicide into the gambia while the, the tree is still standing. Um, you use a pellet type injector? We do often, yeah. yeah it's, you don't do a slash? A slash yeah, we've had better luck with the pellets. Yeah, um, and, and then you can also take them away when you're done because they're, they're cut above um, where, the, where the trees are removed. Um, so the pellet just holds the herbicide right on the cambium, so extremely low volume passes um, backwards and forwards. Down the pole. And uh, we do that while the tree is alive to let that translocate. Um, and, and we usually have very, very high control with poplar. It seems to be interesting to move those um, move materials around and neutralize the resistance and see a good resurgence of the native plant communities. So what herbicide do you use? Um, with, let's see, with uh, that particular with poplar, uh, I believe it's triclopyr. I think it responds to either one if there's a preference. Springtime application then? To spring application? Yeah, I've, I've, uh, we have done them in the spring and it's been very effective. Yeah. It's really, I haven't seen it at a time of year with the cambium um, injection where that's... I think if you'd want it with triclopyr, you'd want it translocating upwards. And I don't know if you did it in the fall, would you use a glyphosate? Would that work in the fall to inject them or to hack and squirt with glyphosate in the fall? We, we've actually seen pretty high levels of control with, with, with both um, with, with both applications, and we haven't seen any, the, the difference around different times of the year. We initially didn't have high hopes of, of a springtime application. We were worried it might not move back to the roots, um, but we had a large scale. Um, Habitat restoration project in, in, in land trust land about a decade ago, and it had extremely high. It was black locust, uh, which mm -hmm. translocates very similar to uh, with this species. But it was so this would work with black locust too, then. Very effective. Cause that's locust. probably some that I tend to use more of a frill cut because the quirky bark is hard to get through with the pellet. It's too thick. Um, but it doesn't work just to girdle these things. No, and that's a like crazy. good question. Because you're actually going to. Um, so there's there's an anti-sprouting hormone that's secreted from the terminal buds basically tells this clonal tree colony of trees not to re-sprout or to limit their amount of re-sprouting and as soon as you start to snip those <coughs> off you, you, that, that sprout suppressing hormone is not, not and it just goes it activates all the dormant root buds and we've all seen it if you cut a locust tree down you get you don't get them by that stump you get them everywhere yeah then you got a whole field the same there. way and that's so that's why we try to neutralize them while the forest is up um, and then and that we're Uh, as far as mechanical removal of bigger plants and stuff. Yeah, so like so privet, we don't have to use a, a, an herbicide. It's, it's uh, with the right equipment, you basically pull it out. Um, it's like if they like a carrot, looks nothing like a carrot, um, and it's a lot harder to pull out than a carrot. But with the right equipment, you can you can pull that species out because it's it, you know, all the re-sprouting potential is right there at the base of crown. What can you get in? Can you get yeah. in with a so the privet's not going to be in the in the wetter areas. Yeah, right, sure. um, yeah. Some of the, some of the, some of the yeah, we got good at the, the owner's ship is actually both they own on both sides. Okay. Yeah. Um, so they can access so they from either side. Pretty much all those. We can come in from this driveway. Stuff in the appendix here. Uh, this first part. All this stuff yeah. is accessible by a uh, dryer. What do you do with the massive amounts of wood you get from this white poplar stand? They're um, often pretty good sized trees. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it often will go right into a chipper. Um, uh, that's, that's not a, a, a tree that's, uh, you have to worry about it re sprouting um, from above ground portions. The roots you do, but not from above ground portions. But still, the chipper will just minimize it. Uh, if somebody wants the firewood, Probably make it make it available. Probably not great firewood, but there's a it lot of fast. It's yeah. fast. Yeah. 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 It's free. <laughs> but if it's free, you've got like a forest full of it. It's yeah. yeah. fire, fire yeah. That's right. We'll bring darts. Yeah. Bring darts yeah. So it's yeah. it's also not a sappy wood. <laughs> it's very pretty. Yeah. Very pretty bird.
That's actually it's very pretty. Good for the springtime when it's sort of take the edge off. Okay. Seems like an exciting project to me. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like really this. interesting. We'll have to condition to monitor that salt marsh so we see what happens. Mm -hmm. There is monitoring. Yeah, we have built, built in. in yeah, uh, here's the one yeah. I'd also like to see what's going on. Like, is it functionally connected? Is this culvert with what's going on there? Because sure. I think that's a big part of the restoration. If it's like, truly tidal or if it's completely collapsed, I just. Oh, it's there's well, definitely water flowing yeah. through there. Yeah, no, no question about it. I was okay. there today. You can see the water fl flushing yeah. in and out, um, well, one direction out, which is. Yeah. Tide. But we've seen it. Um, we've, yeah. And in the big storms, it's over top the whole roads. <laughs> so it's not even this whole area. It's just right, wet. but then is it like but that's a, that's over top and getting stuck? Like I'm just wondering what the bigger picture is here with that connection. Um, I guess we were going to get into the type of project that you would remove, remove a culvert and replace it with an open box culvert. That would be ideal. Um, but again, that I think far exceeds the scope of, you know, the restoration of the mud flats. Well, that would have increased the water levels in there, wouldn't it? If you allowed more flow in, wouldn't it be flooding it even worse? Well, yes and no. It would also leave Let quicker. it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so, so it sometimes it gets pretty, pretty complicated. Um, and and be, uh, I would absolutely want to want to. Uh, Prism, want to look at the prism and you know, evaluate all of that with a modeler uh, prior to changing hydrology. And and you know sometimes smaller projects like this do lead to larger scale restoration. Just when we were there flagging, making the wetland look like a, a Christmas tree with all you know flagging all the little nooks and crannies that we're finding and elevation changes. Um, one of the neighbors walked by uh, and you know, was really interested in it and, and said, "Well, I, I think I own part of the wetland on the other side, and I've been watching that, you know, degrading." And maybe if this is successful, I'll do something over there. So sometimes you can bring some awareness through projects like this. And I can't guarantee it, certainly, but um, sometimes they lead to bigger projects, which would be great. So you don't feel the culverts had any <laughs> negative impact on it? Um, if you purely look at both salt marshes, and I don't say this very often, you would say that the, the culvert seems to be helping this marsh because the marsh on the seaward side of the culvert is in considerably more shape. Huh. A lot more mud flat, more mm -hmm. air, a lot more algae. Um, it's kind of worse. Again, we've stopped our project <coughs> property line. I mean, it's only, we can only right. do right, so right, much. Right. And we've gone right to that line. But generally, we, look, we see tidal restrictions as the negative. Um, right. But purely yeah, that's weird. site observations, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't assume that here. Um, but we'll learn more about it. I mean, that's funny. You mentioned testing. I'm just curious. Some something simple, nitrates and phosphates, and some maybe an old septic system. Maybe something. Well, this whole area. Yeah. All the. Is it all? It, all the general? bad landscaping yeah. dumps right where that mud flat is. Is there? Uh, I hate to see you plant a bunch of plants. Does Nantucket have? And forgive me for not knowing this. Um, uh, any sort of citizen water quality monitoring? I know there's more and more programs. Um, where that's where that's happening. We have a, 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 a few that. people that do some voluntary water testing, uh, but not tons and tons. It's not a program we've really rolled out in large scale. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I would think it would help you a bit in putting those all those plants. You mean. We all, if I may, we yeah. also just uh, they just moved this house out of here. Yeah, I know. We got rid of the septic system yeah, and yeah. we're putting in an IA system. Yeah. That's uh, some couple hundred feet back as well. Yeah. So, and again, yeah, hopefully with the overall, all of the septic systems in this general area are, are slowly being upgraded to IA under right. the, uh, uh, Regulation 64. Yeah. And this was prior approval, but I believe that was formal one or house site, and that's being planted with long terms. Right. Mm -hmm. The, the property is now getting developed further to the south. Right. Further away. So I think there's a lot of benefit. Okay. Other questions? Questions from the public? Concerns? Do we have everything we need to close? All set. You guys ready to close? So I, I do actually have a question, which is, um, is the owner interested in seeing if it brings back sort of very salt, salt marsh? Kind of Maculae and you know, 
um, that it creates it creates a habitat that increases the the animaculae and the, the various. Yeah. I haven't I haven't spoken with them about that, um, but uh, and they they've just had a general observation that it appeared to be degrading. Right. So this is a plant focused. But I have to ask them. I don't know. Would it be something that they'd be interested in in seeing? You know, so that you have a before and after that isn't just basically plant based. Mm -hmm. um, I'd have to ask I'd certainly them. be yeah. fascinated yeah, to see yeah. what it would do. Yeah, I, I, I just haven't discussed that with them. I will say too, it may be something, especially with NCF next door, that some of the things that Jen Carberg has been recently interested in in Salt Marsh Timex at the foundation, um, if they're interested, she may be interested in helping with that too. Just throw a plug in for Jen. <laughs> It is helpful. Well, it just, you know, I think everybody would like to see it succeed and be really interested to see um, how beneficial it is. Great. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you. Second. All in favor? All right. Thank you. Thank you much. Yeah. Is Andy recusing himself? Yeah, I got yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I saw you. I RJG Nominee Trust, 13 Crows Nest Way. Maybe it's not something that's in the Brian Madden from LEC Environmental. Right. With Arthur Reed, representing the outcome. The proposed project before you is a restoration project and some proposed driveway and improvements um, at 13 Crows Nest Way. Uh, there are some isolated and bordering vegetated wetlands on or immediately off the property um, and uh, coastal dune also on the property. Uh, under existing conditions, and I submitted some uh, photographs uh, as part of the application. Uh, I didn't know if folks got a chance to get out there, but uh, under existing conditions, the driveway uh, it's pretty ill-defined. It's rutted, comprised of a mix of gravel, dirt, and patchy grasses throughout, um, which leads to a scenario where cars are parking all over the place. And what we're proposing to do is restore the vegetated wetlands and the buffer zone and the coastal dune and have a more defined driveway. Uh, it's a proposed gravel driveway uh, defined by cobble edging prevent cars going into the wetland uh, where it's existing lawn conditions um, and we uh, have a proposed uh, robust uh, vegetation plan uh, within the restoration area abutting the driveway proposing 11 tupelo saplings and falling shrubs 17 arrowwood 15 winterberry 14 bayberry and 11 sweet pepper bush as depicted on the conceptual landscape plan uh, up around the uh, dwelling or on the coastal dune and the landward portion of the coastal dune is effectively the terminus of the driveway leading up to the house um, we're proposing to realign uh, the brick access steps those are being removed uh, and there's filled stone uh, dry laid stone steps leading up to the front steps of the existing dwelling uh, and the surrounding areas which is all kind of denuded and just patchy grasses uh, is going to be proposed to be restored with uh, 264 American beach, beach grass plugs, um, 43 uh, seaside rose, 21 beach plum and 20 bayberry. 
And the most dune restoration area is 450 square feet. Um, and that kind of summarizes the restoration uh, driveway updates. So will provide a long-term benefit on the subject parcel. Um, so is this restoration, um, like irrigate till established, three years, pull irrigation, since it's native? I don't think you're going to even need to irrigate. Okay. At least, yeah, well, the, the dune plantings are, are drought tolerant, so they should be relatively good. Uh, but you know, it becomes somewhat saturated down in the water. So mm. And yeah, when we were out there, it was yeah, visibly wet, standing water to completely saturated. That's where I was going to sink in for a minute. But. <coughs> Questions, concerns? I guess we can trust the landscaper on this one. <laughs> One of those fly by nights, you know. <laughs> Any questions from the public? Okay. Jeff, we have everything you need to close on this one? We do. We have a motion to close? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Booyah. LLC. I like this one. No. Is that a celebration or a I couldn't say it last time. It continued. Uh, thank you for the applicant. Uh, Booyah LLC, Paul Santos with the Impact of Surveyors. Um, Arthur represents a, an, an abutting owner to this property. He and um, based on some concerns and discussions we've had, would like to actually continue this um, until the next meeting, if that is Oh, so awesome. Excellent. Thank you so much. <laughs> right. That's gonna yes, that's gonna right. be to My work bode so well for you. <laughs> I can take credit for it. <laughs> Excellent. So continue so give me for three want. weeks. <laughs> okay. Uh, continue to win? For three weeks, yeah. right? Yes. 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 Weeks. Okay. To the top. Wait, there's more. Okay, so uh, Harvey C. Jones, Jr., 16 Old North Wharf. Okay, on behalf of the applicant, Paul Santos with the Infected Surveyors, the applicant being Harvey C. Jones. Also with me, it's Arthur Reed, representing uh, Mr. Jones. Uh, Mr. Jones is a uh, leasehold property owner on uh, Old North Wharf. Um, the specific property is number 16, Old North Wharf, which is uh, located on the harbor side, fronts on Old North Wharf. Um, the south to the north is, is Nantucket Harbor. Uh, this is a, uh, an existing uh, one-story cottage. Uh, there are pictures in your um, application package. In the application before you is for the proposed addition, renovation, raising and elevation, and installation of a new foundation system for an existing cottage located within land subject to coastal storm flowage. It's within the buffer zone to Nantucket Harbor, which is uh, the bulkhead itself, the, it, which is also considered a, a coastal bank by definition, a policy bank by definition. And it is also located within an inferred historic filled tidelands or chapter 91 jurisdiction. Um, so outside of the aspect of this component here, we, we may be filing obviously with um, the state under chapter 91 as the entire area over here is, is within inferred historic gold tidelands. Um, the applicant proposes the following work on the subject property. We propose to enclose an existing porch, which is located on the northerly face of the existing structure. We want to raise the building approximately two and a half feet and install a new foundation system, which will incorporate a helical pile um, system for the cottage itself. Uh, construction access would be proposed along Old North Wharf. Uh, there is a shallow groundwater in this particular area, and a dewatering plan uh, will need to be developed for the proposed work. Uh, and what we've proposed is a complete foundation plan. The geotechnical report will be submitted to the appropriate town of Nantucket Departments and to this uh, commission prior to the start of construction. Um, so once we've developed it full, it, it is, um, borings have been done, or a single boring has been done on the project. 
So we are confident with the helical pile setup, um, and but we will submit a full um, geotechnical report, which will outline any type of potential dewatering that would be necessary to uh, for the helical pile installation. Um, the the raising of the structure requires us, if you'll notice in the photos, the structure itself is approximately 337 square feet. There is a boardwalk that runs along the um, westerly side of the property to the north. Um, we would need to raise that boardwalk uh, with a landing and two steps down to accommodate the two and a half foot raise in the structure. And then on the back side where the existing porch enclosure would be, that also be a landing with steps down off the back side of the landing um, to accommodate, uh, again, the raising of the structure and access to the structure. The entire property basically now is, is structure, the majority of it is structure and a boardwalk that wraps around the westerly and southerly side, uh, which abuts the, the bulkhead itself. Uh, we have asked for uh, waivers um, for the project. Uh, the waivers have been pursuant to section 205B5, specifically a waiver to expand the existing structure by constructing new landings and stairs as a result of the dwelling elevation. The applicant applies, wishes to apply for this waiver under the premise that the proposed project will not adversely impact the interest is identified in the bylaw and there are no reasonable conditions or alternatives that would allow the project to proceed in compliance with the regulations. Section 103F3A. And again, um, the majority of the waivers are conditioned on the fact that as we raise the structure, we need to create more structure to, to gain access um, to it. Old North Wharf is elevated somewhat a little bit from the site as you step down onto the site. The approximate um, elevation of the site is about elevation four. The, the decking around the site is elevation four. Flood zone in this area, the velocity zone is elevation 11. And the AE zone is elevation nine. Um, it is a historic structure, so it's not being raised completely. Um, above the flood zone um, as they're just looking to raise it by two and a half feet or so to get some um, elevation to the structure itself. I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, that you may have. Has it uh, been before the HDC? <coughs> I want to say yes. The plans that I have were, were from, from the HDC submission, I believe. But yes. <laughs> It'll have to. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I guess I'm, I find it curious that the drawings before and after aren't to scale, and it certainly looks significantly more larger than um, what is there. And well, the, the, what's yeah. being expanded? The only thing that's changed. The, the, so if you look at the photos, yeah. The, so yeah. the porch in the back yeah. is being enclosed. So it's yeah. definitely larger in the back. It's right. The porch is being enclosed, and then mm -hmm. that stairway, the landing, and the stairs going up to that landing, obviously, are a function of the raising and the elevation. Right, mm -hmm. and it's getting dormers on both sides, and it's being, it's just going to be, uh, that's why I just asked if the HDC had already weighed in on it. And yeah, I, have, I, I used to work here so I know this property pretty well. I am questioning that the increase of livable space by enclosing the porch because um, these are kind of unassuming cottages. The neighbor did the same. Yeah, the neighbor, I was going to say. That's where the they photos, got the idea, you can the tell. The neighbor has done the same. The neighbor did the same if thing. The, if you look at the, this the one. property to the west. Yeah, that's that's that. where they got the idea. Yeah, but he didn't Happened. put the dormers on. And is that no. actually well, raised? Well, it's yeah. more of a, that's is, kind of an HCC thing, this is actually. This the same height. Yeah. yeah. So this isn't raised no, up no. yet. No, no, no. So this is going to go up yeah. and out. Yeah. True. I was just curious, I think. No, I know it's kind of the general change. I mean, it, yeah. like, do it funky and leave it in the dirt, right? But yeah, <laughs> not the trend. <laughs> uh, it's not exactly our purview, actually. Elevations and, and aesthetics. I get your point. I know. Um, yeah. Okay, wrap my knuckles. <laughs> no, no. What's no? What is it going to be skirted with? We know you want to be on the HCC, don't you? You have some free time. With? I mean, you have the piers. It seems like there's a disconnect between the details and the elevations. Well, I don't think you're going to see any because the boardwalk is going to be basically up to um, on the backside. 
No, east and west, west seems like you're going to, on the side, you'll see some. I was just curious how the water, when it does go, how it's going to flow through there. Yeah, I think it's just a lattice <coughs> is what it is, actually. Because right, so it's, it's a pierce. It's, it's a pierce. pierce. It's not, yeah, I just was looking at yeah. details. So actually yeah. right now it's yeah. sitting in the dirt probably, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I mean it's yeah. actually it's a net benefit from flowage. Yeah. 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 So that's, I'm just wanting to make sure yeah. how big the spacing was. And, yeah. yeah. And I think it's going to save the cottage as well, longevity choices. So. Mm -hmm. yeah, Architectural. Yeah. That's right. They weren't, meant, they weren't meant to last. Huh? <laughs> they weren't meant to last. Now they will. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically a helical system will appear yeah. here on each, on each helical pile. So, mm. And then I believe I have, let me just see if the, uh... Can I ask a question, Mr. Chairman? Oh, please. Paul finishes with this. I'm just curious, is it currently licensed through 91? There is a Chapter 91 license for the whole Old North Wharf Cooperative, which mm -hmm. this is part of. And I believe that all of the all of the structures, I think this was cleaned up about 20 years ago, and I, I believe there was a license in place for the existing structures. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, a new license application, as Paul said, is going to have to be filed on that. And I can see there may be some issues we'll have to deal with with, uh, uh, with DEP including whether we will have to provide any additional public access beyond what might have been done previously. I'm always just curious because these are properties where I agree with that, that they've been done cumulatively through that process, mm -hmm. that when you get individual projects in there, I'm always curious to see how that... Tactically, it's all one big piece of yeah. property. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Individual. That, What's the I cooperative think, builds it? Save no, us as far as the yeah. uh, public access oh. is concerned, but I could easily see a circumstance in which yeah. we would be well, you know, I don't know if there is any. Is there any beach at, at the low tide in front of this thing, Paul? No. 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 Okay. No. So there's no, so. Not really nothing we can do. Only at the very, very end. This, this property yeah. and the one to the west are the first two that are actually on the field. Everything, yeah. all the units as you drive in to the left are all on right. pilings. Yeah. So they're all elevated. You yeah. get. These are the first. Well, you've got that. There's an open. This is that. Op, there's an open. Uh, lawn area mm -hmm. and then you have the two units and that's the first section where it's actually because the bulkhead comes down and wraps back in towards old north Ward. Yeah. The tour. Yeah. We'll be talking about the bulkhead more in like yeah, I think yeah, that's that's the same yeah. I know you the deck of their Hinkley is the how beach. Far up is the, the deck of their Hinkley is the beach. Yes. 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 Yeah. How far up is the peak going on this? Two more feet. Peak stays the same, but they're adding the dormers. So it's coming up two and a half feet. The whole. Yeah, so the peak is the, the same peak, but they're adding. Okay. Yeah, you see the dormers that see these. Mm -hmm. That's what they're at. She can actually stand up up there now. Yeah, I mean, I'm just. <laughs> I know. I think it is an impact. The and the two and a half is, a, is obviously because it's historic structure. I mean, quite honestly, if you were to build this, or if you could build this today, you'd be, you'd be 11 plus two feet to the lowest structural member because you're in a velocity zone. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> I know, and I read your introduction. There are going to be some reason. interesting structures of a, you know, yeah. in, in, the, in the pretty near future as a result of this whole thing. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the ninth edition of the code has got free board now built into it, so it's no longer first floor, you know, add or above, it's first wall plus one or lowest structural plus two for new construction. Yeah. So. Bill, I, think you I guess I'm, I know I'm probably alone on this. I, I'm not for enclosing the porch. I think it is an impact right on the waterfront. I understand. Uh, well, I totally understand what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, other questions? Questions from the public? Okay, Jeffrey, have everything you need to close on this? Yes. Do you have a motion, please? Motion, motion close. <laughs> Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, number 16, 28.
EPR Trust, 28 Eel Point Road. Good evening, Mark Roots from Site Design, representing the applicant at 28 Eel Point Road. Um, if this address seems familiar to the commission, <laughs> it's because it is. A few months ago, uh, the commission approved a demolition and grading proposal for this property. Um, and as part of that, we were required to do some drainage swales on the side of the grading. That you may remember a few of those particular details. Um, we are back before you today with a proposal for redevelopment of this site, which conveniently fits entirely within the previously approved grading and alteration footprint. Um, with one minor change, we're actually doing less fill, so the grading is a little bit less uh, pronounced than it was. There's uh, less material going in. We're not going up as high. So the slopes are a little bit gentler. We're keeping the same uh, drainage features that were required previously. Um, no real changes there except just lower elevations on the proposed fill. Uh, <laughs> Amy, I'm just going to recuse myself. And um, all structures are outside 50 foot buffer zones. Um, we are going to be up fairly high, so we don't have any groundwater separation issues. Uh, septic will be outside of the 100 foot buffer zone. Um, at least the leach field will. Some of the you know septic plumbing and whatnot will run through the buffers, but uh, that's basically the project for you. So you, I noticed you had little core rolls in one of your diagram. It's pretty steep slopes. You didn't uh, say you weren't going to grade as much. Well, this is uh, a bit of you know. There's quite a lot of vertical exaggeration here. Yeah. Um, it's just, and I'm not sure if this is actually completely to scale. It's just shown as a schematic because yeah. we were. This is the same uh, drainage swale configuration that was approved on the previous plan. Yeah. Um, we we're just yeah. We're, since we're not going up as high. Uh, you know, just the, the slopes are going to be a little bit, I think we're two or three feet lower than what was previously approved. Mm -hmm. So the slopes are just going to be a little bit more gentler leading into those swales. Yeah. And you don't have to do a, well, actually the septic's out of our... Septic's out of a uh, 100 foot buffer. Okay. Um, Doesn't look like you had to do a raised bed or anything, or I guess just your grading kind of grazed it. Um, yeah, our grading curious. raised it sufficiently yeah. that, that it, it will pass the Title V requirements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Biodiffuser. I drove by this a bunch this morning. I think you guys have a good job with the silt fans and the erosion. Oh, glad to hear that. <laughs> we, 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 we checked it pretty regularly too. Yeah. We're out that way quite a bit. There were fairly significant slopes, so we did tell them to really try to yeah, no, get this up to par because obviously there was potential for issues and we didn't want that. That's a lot of patio. I think patio, it's. A, what you're noticing? Is that what the. Well, I, I'm like, I know what those are, yes. <laughs> I got the spa component. Oh, yeah, it's a spa. Um, <laughs> yeah, once again, the runoff issue for into what I'm, you know, concerned of wet runoff from these. And this looks like a, a block or brick. Or it's just a computer imagery. Proposed patio type. Okay. It's going to be, you know, a, a open, you know, stone. Joint, joint stone. Yeah, this is a computer. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, they don't have a good hatch for that. <laughs> Is and these are the so there's no is there a fence around so this is uh, the these are going to have the auto covers so no, no fence. Uh, yep. <laughs> yeah. Questions? Oh, just still trying to get it all I mean, in there. Yeah, uh, yeah as long as they as long as the, the drainage you know the swales. At, 
the bottom of these, you know, slopes, kind of how we had originally discussed. I'm, I'm, this I'm very, dizzy from looking at the lines here, but take it to the top. And, and, you okay. know, that's we're, all we're mostly for. concerned yeah. about the slopes and the wetlands yeah. and the and the drainage yeah. swales. Yeah. Yeah. And we had to design these to direct the yeah. yeah. runoff so in these directions right. 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 on both sides so that it's not yeah. running directly yeah. into the wetland. It's running jamming more towards the front and the back of the property, more time to infiltrate. And, oh, I use you know, and, and that system. hasn't changed from what was previously yeah. approved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is this steeper than it was here, Mark? Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> Maybe it was really this was the major slope, right? Yeah, the major, slope, right? yeah, the major so slope was here yeah. and and yeah. here. And it's yeah. this yeah. is the side that's actually gone, uh, had the most reduction. This is still fairly close to what it was. This is the purple but, line. But, but again, everything, our you know our plateau <laughs> elevation has been brought down a couple feet, mm -hmm. so all the slopes all around are a little bit gentler. Yeah. And we had shown previously the same uh, area grading for the proposed driveway because we knew that was where it was going to go. So we are staying completely inside that previous mm -hmm. grading mm -hmm. footprint. And what happens with, how, how are these slopes to be, um, to be planted? Is it a meadow or? Um, yeah, it was, I believe, under the original approval, it was going to be uh, planted. Initially, it was going to be stabilized with fabric and then planted with a, with a, a meadow mix. Okay appropriate buffer zone, you know, yep. mix. So they will put like a core mat down or something? Yeah, yeah, during, you know, during here. work so that we're not getting, you know, the, the runoff issue, something to stabilize it a little bit while it's, mm -hmm. while it's still there. Sense. Well, mm -hmm. any questions, concerns? Other? No. Hmm? No. Questions from the public? Okay. So, Jeff, we have everything need to close on this one? Yes, sir. A motion? Yeah, we'll be close. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Still one. And this one's just too short to get the distance. <laughs> uh, back to Old North Wharf Cooperative. Old North Wharf. You brought your own a pack of you use. That's fine. Right. We can get two of them now. Oh, dang. Yep, we're all good. Uh, good evening or good afternoon, good evening, I guess. Uh, <laughs> my name is Carlos Pena from uh, Fulp Infrastructure and Environment, formerly CLE Engineering. And I guess we have a, 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 quite a long history with the peers that are along Old North Wharf. And I'm here tonight uh, representing the uh, Old North Wharf Cooperative. We're proposing to replace the same footprint, uh, the Co-op Omega Pier, which is located near the Fish House. The dimensions on the existing pier are 2.3 2 point, or 2 feet by 31.7 feet. And we're proposing to build it in kind, but move it over two feet so we can center the two slips uh, that are existing out there. We've, uh, we've set up the AGM to come out in April and, uh, and, and construct the pier. We've asked for a minor modification from DEP. Uh, for Chapter 91 for moving it and also from the core, we've received our approval from DEP for the minor mod and we're awaiting the core over the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions? Essentially the same configuration, just moved over? Two feet. Two feet. Yeah. Same construction as the rest of the piers that we have out there. Mm -hmm. And these are just vibrated down, cut off, capped. And when we did when we did the yeah. fish pier back in two thousand five or two thousand four, there were forty six foot piles. We're going to go a little bit longer on this one. So there'll be green hat piles, and then the superstructure will be treated with 0.6 uh, ACQ, 0.6 pounds per cubic foot. That's program. Congratulations. And is this uh, is 
is something that needs any kind of curtain or anything for the work? Yeah, really. What happened is they'll demolish the existing pier, they'll pull the piles, put everything up on the barge, and then uh, drive the new piles. Mm -hmm. Attach it back to the existing pier and then uh, fold everything together. So pretty standard construction. Yeah, standard, yeah. So yeah we, standard we've included standard. conditions on this, yeah. on things like this before for yeah. the contractor to use, you know, best available measures to minimize <laughs> siltation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they all have the little different methods. I know HAM a lot of times will just put their little siltation curtain around it and drive it in and yeah. yank it yeah. and call it a day. That's just pretty standard. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Habitat, did we do it? I mean, I'm assuming there's not a lot of habitat off here. There's, no, in that area, you there's... Just, it's bleak. Muck. You're right, it's muck. No, yeah. it's yeah. it's <laughs> True muck. Dead algae. Dead algae. Yeah, gone. Okay. Other questions? Concerns? Questions to the public? Excellent. Um, we have everything we need, Jeff? We do. Do we have a motion? Yeah, move to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a yep. good night. See if we can get you to your boat on time. We can get you to your boat on time. Yep. Try. <laughs> <Okay>. <clears throat> Gibbs, 4 Galen Ave. Wires and cables. Hello. Don, Don Bracken, Bracken Engineering. Uh, the proposed project is for a one car garage, uh, 12 feet wide by 20 feet long, uh, located in a coastal flood zone. Uh, the existing grade is about elevation four. The flood zone elevation is seven. Uh, the garage will be constructed with flood vents in compliance with the building code and FEMA regulations. Um, the, uh, the only odd sort of thing about this plan, you'll notice that the slab elevation is 5.8, which is 1.8 feet above grade. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason for that, the owner wanted to try to get as much height as he could in case it was a flood. You know, <laughs> more of a chance that um, I guess he has a, a nice boat that he stores in the garage, doesn't want to see that float away. Um, they will have a temporary ramp that goes in and out. It's not shown on this plan because it's not allowed by zoning. So in order to get this boat in and out. Mm -hmm. uh, from the outside, it will look like a regular garage. The doors will be down and the siding will be covering the 1.8 feet of additional concrete okay. in that location. Um, some of the hedge will have to be removed in order to be able to access the garage. It's an existing shell roadway right now, so it will, it will be a porous driveway going up to the garage. That's pretty much it. No Any great questions? changes? Or? Uh, we're not proposing any great changes to what's there right now, but we did um, submit a certificate of uh, compliance request um, with these changes. So there is an outstanding order of conditions that we withdrew because there are some great changes from that time, mm -hmm. ranging like six inches to 12 inches in, in some areas. Um, what we'd like to do is be able to get this order of conditions and come back and try to rectify the previous order of conditions. <coughs> so the, so the, as you know, the abutter yeah. is worried about the runoff. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, oh. here's a letter. Yeah. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. I know that Joe, you know, Mentioned to me at the last meeting. That's why I said I'll, I'll withdraw and go. You know, he, he's worried about elevating all this. He's okay. some HCC issues as well, but um, I think it's already received approval yeah. from the HCC. So yeah. the garage itself. Yeah. Because you can simply I mean you can condition obviously yeah. no fill, mm -hmm. but then also you can condition mm -hmm. that no great any site generator runoff stays on site as a condition, yeah. and then they can. I mean, if you look at it, the site you can up. you can. Barely notice it really yeah. if you didn't have the grades ahead of time. I mean, it doesn't mm -hmm. look out of place, it doesn't look like anything is getting pushed directly to any, any of the neighbors. Mm -hmm. But there was some, um, you know, some I, I think minor grade changes. But you know, it's well, I would think that when you're talking about removing some of the privet, it might I'm not crazy about the stuff, but it does sort of create a, it a bank, yeah, a, yeah, it's a plus for. So that. I mean that's what we were hoping to do is yeah. uh, you know maybe leave the other order open so we would be allowed to maybe 
do some additional vegetation mm -hmm. to compensate for any slight increase mm -hmm. as a result of the yeah, minor well. filling. So. And is the garage slab going to displace more water and like the roof runoff for that? Uh, I mean, it would be typical of any additional impervious surface, so there will be, you know, some displacement, but, yeah. you know, being a coastal flood zone, I'm not sure that's a, I mean, I think you'd be more concerned about deflection or mm -hmm. going right. towards other neighbors, but. Um, so the water table is so close that there's no point in trying to put a catch basin in to hold the runoff from I mean, I, we, I mean, we certainly could, you know, again, we were going to come back with a plan to try to address yeah. the issue. We could put in some trenches around to, to you know help absorb some of the roof runoff that's there right now. It would have to be very shallow, obviously. You know, during a major storm event, right. you know, at least it would help some of that initial, you know, right. absorption. You know, um, for the smaller storms. So. Yeah. I think we found in that neighborhood, Ian, that when you get down to those surface elevations around three, that you're only getting, you know. 18 inches at best like you're lucky. Yeah. 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 yeah it just mm -hmm. by the time Liquid you put sand. a structure in yeah. your structures touching the water mm -hmm. to get any you know six inches of cover over the top yeah. of it it's just it's not yeah, very I feasible i would think if you didn't change existing Mm -hmm. You're it's gonna big, make big. everybody around you happier. Right. No, right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you got done existing, all of them so that we've done, you got existing. So the that. next one we have, you know, same <laughs> thing. We're not yeah. proposing any change to existing grade. Uh, makes right. Well, easier. you're not consisting a, you, for this application. You're not considering a grade no, change. So not from what's if you're coming right back right. in front of us, yeah. we can deal with. Yeah. And I'll later. say, and the reason why so. we're, we're a little bit of sticklers for it is historically what we've seen and this neighborhood specifically <laughs> not not Galen Avenue but the Walsh Willard oh, yeah. Street is the first time is you get eight inches to a foot in and then the next application that came in five years later you got another eight inches to a foot and all of a mm -hmm. sudden you get 15 down years down the road and you're three feet higher than where it originally started and that water has got nowhere to go so we in the flood zone uh, try to limit it at all because yeah. creep in this direction it's not like cutting vegetation where you can let it grow back it's a lot harder to get rid of once it's in and you can see some of the properties on Walsh and Willard that look like they're on little little hummocks because <laughs> they've been yeah, built up over time and you look at the permitting history and it's honestly like three and a half and then you get the as built two years later and it's five and the next one that's you know in mm -hmm. the early 90s is all of a sudden the as builds at like six and a half and you're like awesome <laughs> that's right a couple trash they, 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 they creep here, so we we, we try to there. pay close yeah. attention to it for these areas because it it creates a lot of problems not just for abutters but this area also yeah. doesn't have a lot of stormwater drainage infrastructure in right. it and it creates flooding in the roads and it's the area is very problematic for water regime changes mm. and unless yeah. someone gives me a phone number that they can call when there's putting puddles and flooding and all those things um they called me so <laughs> trying to make sure that i minimize those as much as okay. selfishly so do we typically require any chemicals or any hazardous materials oh, yeah, right. to be stored above, above flood the elevation yeah. okay. on the deck <laughs> on the boat so yeah no you don't want those mm -hmm. Okay, um, other questions? Any questions from the public? They're dwindling. Perfect. Okay, Jeff, we have everything we need. We no? do. Good motion. motion Go second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, CRM management, 73 Holbert Ave. Do you have a colored one you're using? <laughs> the one. Um, Brian Madden from LEC Environmental with Don Brack and Brack and Engineering. Um, so the existing project stems from the need for some pool repair. Uh, the subject parcel itself is within the flood zone. Uh, so the vast majority of the subject parcel is within flood zone. There's also a coastal dune, coastal bank north of the existing single family home. Uh, we've shown the 100 foot buffer zone to that on the site plan. Uh, so what's <laughs> happening is um, it's an older pool 
in the front portion of the property close to Holbert Ave. Um, and it's groundwater seeping in, there's cracks. And there's a need to repair that in place. And uh, in order to be able to do that, um, we're gonna to need to temporarily draw down the groundwater surrounding the pool. Um, and so what will happen first is the existing pool water will be pumped out um, to a truck. Um, and a series of point wells are gonna be installed around the pool, uh, connected um, to um, a pump in a, a pipeline uh, that's going to discharge out across Holbert down Charles Street and provide a little map um, out to the catch basin at the corner of North Beach Street and Charles. Mm -hmm. um, and so, in assessing alternatives, um, you know, the alternative that we dismissed was uh, pumping out to the harbor. Uh, that's actually a longer route and would require the fence, uh, the piping to extend through uh, Coastal Dune. Coastal Beach, uh, north of the property. Um, I know that uh, it recently took place for the down holder. Um, so in analyzing alternatives, uh, we felt that this was the better option. Um, and Don has had some consultation with DPW and will be seeking their approvals and um, would expect any conditions that they put on, if any, uh, to run with the order of conditions. That the commission would issue. Um, and so I guess just to, to end, we're, we're not looking at full depth reconstruction of the, of the pool foundation. It's just kind of, it's a little bit more elaborate than patch in place, but um, in order to be able to do that, we do need to dry down the water and repair it. How big is this pool? Depth wise? Uh, it just looks like you count the wellheads. It's 70, yeah. 70 feet. They say it's the biggest pool on private pool on Nantucket. Yeah. <laughs> big, and, and the deep end is like 12 and a half feet deep. And the groundwater, a geotech has been on the site to do some testing to determine how, what it's going to take to dewater it. But um, you know, they do it in two phases probably. They would do the uh, shallower phase, pump that down, what they need for the shallower phase. And then fix that supposedly, and then do the deeper phase. Try to so the chances are not all the wells will have to run at once. They'll try to break it up if they can't to get that full depth. But the groundwater right now is, uh, I think you said 3.7 feet, and so then they they, they want to get it at least a foot foot and a half below the bottom of the pool. So they're going to be drawing you know drawing down probably you know 10. 10 feet of water, yeah. So how many gallons do they calculate they're going to pump out in a total? They, they figure it's somewhere between 500 and 600 gallons a minute. Would be so the a minute? minute? Yeah. yeah. But, you know, for a drainage, that's why for a drainage structure, going into a catch basin, you know, when you break that down, we, you know, usually for drainage you calculate cubic feet per second. You know, it's not as... It, it, it would be a, a catch base would be able to handle it. Looks that small, it yeah, sounds smaller per second. Know, it, it sounds a lot bigger. I, um, so, are you going to have permanent soil compaction then when this is done? In other words, because you're draining out all the water so that the sand is going to start compacting, and will that have any difference on affect groundwater flow in the area? Um, I'm sure it's going to affect groundwater flow towards us, yeah. you know, within a certain yeah. radius. Yeah. But yeah. unfortunately, it is it's it's sand, so yeah. right, right. you know that's not going to condense much when you know with drawing down the water. Um, so, is there a specific time of year you do this when the groundwater is maybe a little tide? Tide. Uh, well, like you, you don't know, want to impact plants by taking yeah. the water, so like it's kind of. I don't. Third, yeah, I'm not sure that would happen because it, the water table is probably below the root system yeah. I think for most plants anyway. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're trying to get this done as soon as possible yeah. so that they can have it for the season. So they got to run this while they make the new pool, let it cure. It's got to be yeah. right. Yeah. Right. And I, and I had a conversation yeah. with the people that are doing the work. I said, "Can you give me some idea?" And they yeah. said, "We." They're, they're setting a diver in there next in the pool. I think next week or the week after to try to. Get some idea of what it's going to take. He says, "We, you know, we really don't know. We really have no idea if it's going to take a, a week or three weeks or whatever." Yeah. So it is nice. 
<laughs> any change? I die over. I love it. Um, any uh, changes? And I guess the same same pool going in, same shape, same. Everything. Yes, yeah. Everything. Well, the the, 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 the pool not, isn't not leaving. The pool isn't yeah. going out. No. Yeah. No. 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 It's just uh, fixing the bottom. Trying to find the leak. Trying to find the leak. I thought they were going to find the leak. Put his finger in it till they can get it out. I got you. Yeah, they're going to take the bottom off. Okay, yeah, it said it wasn't a patch shop, so, so it made uh, me think that they were going to pour. No, it's totally so, so not, not, not to de degrade the conversation, this. No, so no. this originally came in, and Don and Brian originally approached the office because there was some question of whether or not this was regular maintenance of the pool and those kinds of things. And after we talked it out, one, we all kind of agreed that this is totally irregular maintenance uh, because it's extreme, unbelievable. Pool. But... Um, <laughs> I think we felt better about the level of work that was going into the regular maintenance to get a permit for it was better <laughs> yeah. than to just not get a permit for it. So, okay. yeah, twenty well heads, that's not normal. Maintenance. No, no, no. Is that how many wells? No, twenty know. well heads is roughly. That's what we're estimating. Yeah. 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 And yeah. what's the diameter of the? They're probably two inch wells. Two inch. Yeah. Inch. It's gonna, you know, yeah. Someone's gonna have to. They have. They don't have a contractor yet. To right. Do it, so. But they, calls they will likely use two inch well. Oh, it's going to be. Oh, that's the other reason why they're permanent change than this. They were putting it in the pool. I don't see this coming back. Why not? You're going to have a permanent compaction. I think you'll be amazed how much water is going to move. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. How about why not freeze it instead? Wouldn't it be easier to freeze it? I don't know if you can freeze groundwater. Oh, my God. It must be getting late. Oh, my God. I'm not even happy to listen. I'm going into I mean, the the oh, we're getting giddy here. Oh, no, no, yeah. no, seriously. I mean, people do that. They no, freeze I'm, the groundwater yeah. because it turns out then you don't have to pop out so I've much water continuously. That. Was That's that sad. option ever considered? No, it wasn't. I've never heard of that. Uh, I'll ask the geotechnical oh, engineer if he's ever. I mean, yeah. freeze salt yeah, water. Done it. Oh, well, eventually. Twenty-eight <laughs> <laughs> point. Yeah. You just concentrate salts in the soil in really weird lenses. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is a uh, this is an interesting one. So, other questions? Nope. Any questions from the public? Curiosity. <laughs> had to, you had to say. I'll, I'll, I'll make quick because I'm just thinking. Those poor words. <laughs> I'm Molly Molden for the Nantucket Land Council. Um, I haven't actually looked at this application thoroughly, so I was just trying to wrap my head around it. And this may seem like a silly question, but depending on how long the pumping ends up having to go on for, I just don't know if there are any small isolated wetlands on adjacent properties that should be monitored for drawdown impacts, uh -huh. or if it ends up going on throughout, you know, for more than a certain amount of time. I know it's temporary, but I'm just not that familiar with the So the, the, the closest isolated wetland is the one that is adjacent to Bathing Beach Road? Kind of on the pog of its side, okay. that big marsh right. in there that's always seemingly flooding the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. That's the closest vegetated wetland to the project. So How far maybe is your that? Your sidewalk will be dry for a day. <laughs> um, and, and from that distance, just to estimate for Ian, I, I bet it's about from the project area to here is probably about a hundred yards. Okay. Guestimation. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of water. Entry. Yeah. How long do you think this will take, Don? That's why I was Three trying weeks, to get maybe. that feedback yeah. from the pool people, and they really couldn't tell us. I, you know, if I had to guess from the comp, I, I would say probably three weeks anyway. Yeah. So that's something that you guys, given the fact that this is a temporary structure, is you you could do a window of operation to say once oh, yeah. they give you the start of work that mm -hmm. that's approved for three weeks and then if they need that extended Extension. they can come yeah. back and there'll be a meeting in between there yeah. to come back and say we're going to need an extra two so at least you know how long it's going to be or you could set that time frame and then they could also review to you like they'd have information like we've moved 500 gallons a minute for this amount of time or they, they would have data for what's going through and um, I think after they dive, they're supposed to know better. So, I mean, if they dive and find all sorts of things, they tell us it's going to be five weeks, then we'll be back anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? Before yeah. we do the work. Is it just ways. a visual or x ray kind of? Might... I don't know. I just, I'm still just boggled by diving a pool. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Think but I think if they, they could pump, put a dye in those well pipes and pump the pipe. 
put the die in, you could see it come through the come pool. Yeah, go in reverse for a few minutes. <laughs> so I'm on the side of the we're talking we two million gallons to over water. three weeks. <laughs> well, true. well, I mean, yeah. that's the course of the entire duration, but I mean, really, the that's a concentrating minute, area is the deeper portion of the pool. Um, <laughs> right, that, that would be the deeper portion. <laughs> the five to six hundred. I know. I'm not trying to. Yeah. Well, to to be fair, I it, think we should get a site visit to this pool. It's happening. <laughs> I see a list. Oh, yeah, once the, watch the once the yeah, permits yeah, open, the, you guys. Well, actually, even right now that the application and maybe a cocktail. Yeah. Once it's it is. You guys are welcome to inspect <laughs> the site during actually, reasonable hours. I think the pool is pretty seventy eight as well. That pool is. Okay. Seventy four, seventy five. Yeah. Absolutely. Would it make sense to put a like a sheeting she around pile. it so you limit the flow in and you wouldn't have to pump so much it water? It, we yeah, did one on Johnson Street two years ago when we had it running for a, a, a solid week. It was yeah. uh, Jesse Dutra pulled the pool out and put a new one in in a week. Oh, okay. And it, so I mean, we, we put in 16 more heads. 16, yeah. <laughs> Is that a lot of water? I know it's only half the size. Old, of this. You know, yeah. 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 And we, and we drained it. I mean, it was permitted. I mean, yeah. it's going. <laughs> the street train. <laughs> 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 you trained it. Uh, uh, <laughs> I know this sounds awful My to say, but previous company I worked. Two million gallons of water in the grand scheme of things is really. It's not. not that's that what I'm saying. It sounds like a lot. It sounds like a lot, and it's and it's all flowing back into. No, that would be the entire drain was about two and three. I should only give the cubic feet per second. Yeah, yeah. That's about what you're doing. Should have done the second. Yeah, per second. One and a half cubic feet per second. But you do have to run it twenty-four once you start. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I have a feeling it's as soon as you shut it off, it's like oh, we just lost all that. But the cone of influence, I don't think, is going to be that great. Just from you know, I think so much water. Yeah, it's so much water. Yeah. It's yeah. just yeah, exactly. You know, I don't think it would affect it if there's a wetland. It's, it's like away. pumping out a pool with a garden hose. Does this yeah. catch basin? Yeah. This goes into the Children's Beach. No. Yeah, the whole area feeds feeds yeah. together yeah. 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 down there, and they have that alternative pump system set up temporarily down there. Yes, that's actually I think getting ready to get replaced again. So, so your your point being that this is going to go into the harbor. It's going to go down. back into the harbor. Eventually, yeah. 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 Well, this salt water probably. So. A lot of it. Some of it. Actually, it's, yeah, that deep. I mean, it's what's there. It's pretty clean. It's it's probably both. Pumping it out. It's, it's going to clean. Yeah. It's yeah. Strain yeah. through the... Yeah. 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 What was the water level you pumped at? How about that? We, the wellheads were nine feet. It wasn't a pool at that, this size. <laughs> I mean, not, yeah. You know, and then we did the, the foundation over on Easton Street, just before the hotel, in all those foundations we had to pump. Yeah. Oh, yeah, those are just as deep as this would be. Same, yeah. Same yeah. yeah. We did one on Welch Street two years before that. Yeah. The foundation, that's what we just yeah. put the pumps in. And obviously, there's a filter to prevent sediment and such. Yeah, right? yeah the well screens themselves. Yeah, they don't they screen they, anything out. Oh, right. Okay. So, yeah, so you're running those all points yeah. are screened. Yeah. 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 Okay. Other questions? Yeah. That's interesting. Um, crazy. Okay. We have everything we need, Jeff? Maybe. <laughs> we do. Sorry, I just got the board of select in this episode. We do. We are good to go. Okay. We have a motion. A motion to close this. A second. All in favor? Any anybody in favor? Thank you very much. Oh, good. Thank you. I'm assuming you're all in favor. Okay. Holy smokes. I am curious about the freezing. Oil. I gotta look that up. Yeah, I'm gonna ask you know the geotech that yeah. got well, that's pretty wild. to figure out how much is gonna have to be. Put. I worked on jobs where we thawed the, 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 the yeah. ground out, but I've never froze one. I've never. That seems <laughs> intense, but maybe it isn't. But okay. Yeah, yeah. It expands. So yeah, it expands. Forty-eight. Yeah, that this would not be a good thing. Forty-eight <laughs> Wall Street. <laughs> Trust. Well, I'm, I'm forty-eight Wall about Street. Skirt around it. In other words, rather than driving piles down, you would end up freezing around it, so you wouldn't have to pump so much water out. Yeah, yeah, sheet pile. Well, I know thing. it's been used. Toscana would love to do that job for you. <laughs> sure. We pumped some sheet pile down that way. Wall Street. Where are we? Right around the corner. 324. Yep. Same in the neighborhood. Hey, you're keeping them all in the neighborhood right now. Great. You know, so I take the easy ones. I give the tough ones to Brian. Uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, this is an easy one. Uh, Don Bracken, Bracken Engineering. Uh, 48 Wall Street. <laughs> um, 
this plane is broken up. The top section is what's existing and the bottom section is proposed. So you can clearly see what the differences are going to be. Um, this house, by the way, does have HTC approval. Um, the existing house, we're, again, it's coastal flood zone only. Um, the existing house does not comply with the current building code and FEMA requirements. It's a little too low to the uh, elevation 7 is the uh, flood zone here as well. I believe it's 5.5 is the existing first floor. Um, they had looked at, I, I believe, um, you know, remodeling it, and then they decided the best, best thing to do because of the flood zone regulations and so forth was to raise the existing building, building and construct a new building. Um, obviously, the new building will comply with the first floor, re floor requirements of the building code and FEMA will be constructed on a crawl space foundation with flood vents. Again, there are no proposed grade changes. You can see on the existing plan, we've added several spot shots so they can be verified after construction. You can also see, even though the house size itself is slightly larger than the existing house by just over 100 square feet, you can see the amount of impervious area under existing conditions with the brick um, um, patios and the brick uh, driveway compared to what's proposed. So there will be uh, more vegetation. Uh, there is a deck between the proposed shed and the main house, so that's going to also allow some, some filtration through the soil. So um, I think all in all, this is proposed conditions is, is, uh, is going to have a, a better result you know, for runoff and flood protection and so forth. Agreed. Yeah, so it's on it here, <coughs> um, here is an hour crawl space or? It's on a crawl space, a crawl yeah, space. with flood vents. Yeah. <coughs> oh, it has crawl space, oh, vents, okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That seems very straightforward. Mm -hmm. Very happy. Okay, questions from the public? Oh, please. Hi. Sorry, we're kind of giddy over here. <laughs> Gets that way in the late night. It's interesting. I look at this it is thing. fascinating. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm Amanda Cross is my name. I jointly own my sister. The house, it's, a, it's like a twin house. It's immediately to the east, I guess, closer to town. <laughs> and my concern is that area, that you know, is incredibly low. Not this winter, but the winter before. It was flooded a lot. You say it's level, but it's. I've been looking at how things are done there in the past, and we did it. Everybody, you know, you, you pump your crawl space and you just sent the water somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And I'm concerned that it's still, I think now we should look at things as you should take all the water that comes down on your property and try to get it through your property down to ground. Going out into Walsh, people have pumped out into Walsh the winter. A year and a half ago, it flooded Walsh. It then froze, and that was one of the streets. My um, daughter lives over on Hulbert, and that was the only way to get to Hulbert was through Walsh. And the water got pumped out onto Walsh, froze, and then you couldn't use Walsh. And it does slow down slightly, <coughs> slope down slightly towards Walsh. And the, the original plans that they had, it shows now. It must be because I went through the. I was out of town. I had deal with some family issues. This plan now is, this is the only brick part, but their original plan had brick all the way around. Um, and I assume that the HCC said, no, I don't yeah. know, because again, I wasn't here. I'm concerned about, one, the deck here. Is there slats so the water can go through, and what's underneath the deck? Is it, you know, what kind of material? Can it be and I don't even like, and it would be better if this were gravel. Anything to get the water mm -hmm. through and not behind it. The people behind, it's even lower because it drops significantly. Not significantly, but Enough. they're under they're, yeah. they're underwater yeah. most right. of the winter. Understood. Um, so if what, just knowing what, I mean, I don't understand why we've been, <laughs> a deck, I mean, it's up high because now the, Houses, yeah, it's up but it just seems like there is somewhat. This is the new one, so I'll put it here. Yeah. But it's it slopes this way, and I and I'm afraid that it's going. You know, what is the materials being used when you 
Um, because you're going to have to, is, is there a foundation underneath it? Is they going to have to pump out of it? What kind of soil would we go back in? Is it how, how much can we get the water to stay on that property right. and go through the land? There's no, there's this one storm drain up at, is it James Street? Yeah. It's past my property. Mm -hmm. But that's, it's just, I just yeah. think everybody sort of needs to be responsible for their property. And Understood. it's not totally level. But um, they have removed a lot of the brick, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Better, better than it. This will be better than the original house. Yeah, and this house will actually, I know that when they raise these houses, they make us fill in the crawl spaces, level right. the outside right. grade, so you don't end up with a hole anymore. They don't want you to have a hole under yeah. the house, so. But I just want, so it I might mean, be a bunch of gravel in there. That, yeah. You know, you've got a lot of house, and then that deck, that huge deck. Do we have any information on the deck? Uh, no, but we can um, condition it. If, if, you know. And what is underneath the deck? I mean, we also we have a, mm -hmm. a partial deck, and there's some. There, not papers, and what they call it, but it's, it's yeah. ugly tile stuff, and it's it's better that <coughs> now we understand better, um. and it's, it's to come up higher to have grass there, have something, mm -hmm. or to have just. Permeable. Anything so that the water goes through and de particularly yep. does not go out under Walsh. And there is a slope down. It's very gradual, but there's a slope down to Walsh. Mm -hmm. Because that's that area trying to get through. I think the problem down there, ma'am, is that yeah. there's the water table is so high, it doesn't take very much rain at all until you've got a puddle everywhere. I mean, oh, what? Yeah, you I basically think. can't you can't expect to percolate <coughs> a lot of water there. And the biggest problem down there is coastal storm flowage of the mm -hmm. seawater coming up and then that's impossible right. because the volumes are just right. tremendous but i i watched with the the um the storms in january a year and a half ago and mm. where there wasn't water i mean the when people had work because they were pumping out from underneath into wall street and then that's when it froze it wasn't because I watched the the, um, the tidal part, because that was huge. I mean, we had the what, like mm -hmm. five high tides, the biggest high tides we've seen in too many high tides. You know, mm -hmm. a long time, yeah, fifty years yeah. or something. I mean, it's just to do everything possible to get as much water if we can to not end up particularly on Wall Street and certainly not on the neighbors of the dam. But I think yeah. now that the same, um, mm -hmm. the older foundation did not provide any water storage. So with a storm, with the breakaway panels, water's going to be able to go into that house. The other thing I thought, Jeff, wasn't a lot of those sump pumps going into the sewer line and they broke those apart? So now Some of those did. Street. This is a house that had a, a sump that was coming off the back of the house yeah. and was going essentially onto the abutter at Grand Point Road. Mm -hmm. um, but I... That it, that activity is not proposed to continue. Right. 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 So I think that's that should change hopefully. Yeah, that should change. Like I said. I mean, that's something that you guys can also condition. I mean, you can yeah. condition. That's more than saying if you <clears throat> yeah, can provide those so that if we do see something that happens, it's like okay, this is what yeah. we're supposed to. Happen. Yeah. This, well, we can going, yeah. we can condition a, a you know, permeable deck, and I'm assuming it's a wood deck, and I would just and. The permeable underneath. And gutters on the roof. Yep. To hopefully not control sheet out yeah. to the street or off mm -hmm. property. Yeah, controlling the runoff. Mm -hmm. Down spouts. Well, um, gutters are possible. an alternative. Like, I know some of these houses, they're not designed for gutters, but we could put like a uh, trench stone drain. trench drain. Yeah. Trench drain. Nice gravel like that. At least, around. You know, yeah. not to get locked into gutters, but some method of, you know, disposing the roof runoff. Yep. You know, either with gutters <coughs> You have to maintain the gutters, but to retrieve the gravel around the perimeter yeah, is actually like a good idea. Um, you know, the, the new code requires the crawl space floor to be above grade. Mm -hmm. So there's, you can put a condition on there, no pumps, but, you know, if they need a pump, then they're in trouble, you know. Right. Um, it's supposed to be able to flow out and flow back in, so. So when you say above grade, are we mm -hmm. talking two inches or? Six? It just said, yeah, it could be two inches, could be yeah. six inches, you know, it could be anything. Yeah. As, as long as when the water comes in, it can automatically recede right. uh, about without any human intervention. So, right. and I think overall, as these keep get happening, you're going to start eliminating all these pump systems. I don't know why people built the crawl spaces <laughs> two feet. I don't know. Anyway, and they're all pumping them out. So, 
Standard masonry. He was. <laughs> Lots of interesting pieces. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate it. But you can also condition to address those concerns yeah, we'll too that it, the area beneath the deck remain permeable. Permeable. Yeah. You can exactly. include all of those things. It's a valid point. I mean, it, it doesn't make it look like they're increasing their ground cover, but in reality, with decks, it's yeah, it's better than patios personally. Yeah. Patios in the winter time don't permeate very well. Okay. But thank, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Okay. Any other questions? No. Okay. Jeff, we have everything we need? We do. We have a motion? Yeah. Oh. Not bad, Jeff. Second? All in favor? All right. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. oh, getting down there. I can see it on the list. <laughs> Eight Bishops Rise, LLC. Eight Bishops Rise. Mm -hmm. uh, Brian Madden from LEC. I represent the applicant. Um, this property is directly south, uh, southwest of uh, 28 Yale Point Road, uh, for reference. Um, <coughs> new construction is a vacant lot, uh, part of uh, the Bishop's Rise subdivision. Um, so new dwelling, detached garage, pool, patio, cabana, pool fence, utility, septic system. Uh, majority of the work is all outside of the 100 foot buffer zone. There's a BVW on the eastern portion of the site. It's flagged, um, shown here in green. Uh, no work activities within the 50 foot buffer zone. Uh, very minimal activity between the 50 to 100 foot, certainly less than the 50%. Uh, we've also identified that wetland to the north. Um, that does extend some buffer zone, uh, 100 foot buffer zone onto the, the work limit. Um, so it's just. Small portion northeastern corner of the house uh, and a small retaining wall and just a uh, fenced in lawn area for the pool fence and, and the well that's uh, uh, within the buffer zone. And, uh, just across the 100 there? Yeah. yeah, that's it. Yep. Was this a natural heritage? Yeah, this is uh, a, the prior really subdivision that was approved. So the uh, development footprints had been previously approved and um, there's a slight modification, uh, but the overall uh, protected land on this lot is the same. So the pools are one of the high points in the law? <laughs> yes, yeah, similar. Yeah, the, the, um, the no waivers requested in this, yeah, even though the pool and scepter are outside her. Certainly a lot of separation there. The ground bedroom pool cabana. That's fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Call that a guest house. No, it's a cabana. Pull a cabana. Yeah. You're trying to be creative. That's where you go. <laughs> <laughs> trying to take a nap after all those lamps. I know. Okay. Oh, they made a lap pool for that. Right. That's right. You gotta look at the other plans. Walk up the street. You can find it. I don't know. <laughs> the little path to the well. Um, Okay. Um, any questions, concerns? <laughs> oh, a pool fence. Cool. Well, I'm the retaining wall. I'm looking. I know a pool fence. Someone going out of style. Smart person. Yeah. So the, um, yeah. the retaining wall is kind of at a high point, so it's a little bit sunken right there. Okay. Hmm. I didn't have any issues with it. Pool fence, septic renewal. Okay. okay. Um, no questions? Is there any questions from the public? No? Okay, Jeff, we have everything you need to close on this one? Uh, yes, we do. We are good. Close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Thanks. Thank you very much. 262 Pulpus Nominee Trust, 262 Pulpus Road. Yep, last one. Uh, Brian Madden from LEC Environmental. Um, larger property that mostly everyone's familiar with, uh, but the work activity being proposed right now is, is very minimal. Um, and we've created a couple inset sheets uh, that um, provide a little bit more description of what's going on here. Um, I don't know wetland resource areas across this entire site, um, but just keep it short and sweet. So 
the first structure as you pull into the driveway uh, is a get guest house and, and a gate house that you drive through. Um, on the east side of the dwelling, um, there are uh, there's a deck, small deck in the back, and then a small little entry point in the front side. Uh, under the deck, there's a crawl space access. That deck is being removed and replaced with a smaller granite stoop. Um, and the crawl space access is going to be put on the south side. Um, and it's just going to allow for you know, better uh, access to the mechanicals. There's a small crawl space, uh, three, three feet, eight inches deep. Um, you know, there's no groundwater issues there, but it doesn't have the two feet of separation uh, to groundwater, the two foot separation, so we're asking for that waiver. Uh, but basically it's just kind of replacement of the existing crawl space access. Um, so that's the only work activity there. And again, all that, I didn't say it, but all that work activity is outside the 50 foot buffer zone. The silt fencing, which already has been installed, um, is along the lawn edge, uh, upgrading the 25 foot buffer zone. Um, I just have some photographs if you guys just want to see what that's the front yeah. back of the house. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. um, the other aspect of the work, uh, and it's a very minimal amount of work activity that goes into the 100 foot buffer zone, is they're installing a new game court. Um, the game court has been situated in a location that's existing lawn area uh, to preserve the native vegetation. Mm -hmm. um, the court itself is outside the 100 foot buffer zone, the BBW uh, to, the, to the west, um, but only a, there's a small clearing area uh, that it creeps into the 100 foot buffer zone. Um, and there's silt fencing proposed in that location. So that's about it. Okay. What's the court surface? Did you say? Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I think it's going to be. Uh, you know, What's the existing? It's, um, it's kind of like a synthetic grid type. It's thing. like a weird plastic tile yeah. system. They're like little, like foot and a half square tiles that yeah. link together. It's yeah. really weird. Well, what, yeah. what it's, it's like a big like bath like. mat. So like so a running the, track. Yeah, the, the property Not just even, switched yeah, hands a few months yeah. back, so this is for the new owners. Mm -hmm. I, I would assume it would be a synthetic. It's all flat um, yeah. as you go down and fully vegetated down to, to the wetlands. So you have 100 feet of vegetation there. Right. Mm -hmm. Crazy. How many? construction vehicles are going to be needed for the game court like is it necessary to put a silt fence in that pinch point where you're going through the wetlands you're talking at the bridge yeah yeah or I mean, like if, something if the commission would want to consider um a condition uh, it, there, there's already signs they're putting new uh, replacing the roof on the existing structure up there and there's already signs that yeah. Say keep off the grass, but if you if the commissioner would like some additional barriers there. I just worry if you have big trucks going up there day after day that Yep. I don't know. God, this thing is huge. Yeah, I'm wondering what kind of games they played on the first one versus the new larger one. Like what? I was looking at the house to the north. I was like, well, it's like Wait. we have all these like professional athlete ask people. Yeah, well, it's outside. Most of it's outside. It's, it's, it's a jurisdiction. Yeah. Yeah. Family yeah. That kids, Lots of active children. Like, play in the grass, kids. <laughs> it makes you healthier. It your ticks. immune Deer system. Ticks. Okay. Well, they treat no ticks here. <laughs> no ticks, that's right. Any concerns? Questions? Questions from the public? Good to go. We ready to do a close on this one, Jet? Do we have everything? Oh, yeah. Move to close. Yeah, second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, okay. So we got that one. Uh, Sheep Commons LLC, 214 Pulpus Road. Sorry to interrupt, man. I just didn't see Jeff. I know Jeff, but I reviewed the plan for Jeff, so I can be happy to. <laughs> Thank you.
said it was on you because your name was on the point. Uh, for the applicant, Eric Gasparo, uh, Jeff Black will file this application, but I had reviewed the, um, uh, the septic for him. And so the purpose of this project is to um, uh, upgrade an existing septic system, which consists of an existing septic tank and leach pit. And um, those would be uh, replaced with a, um, septic a new septic tank, a septic tank processor, and an elevated leach pit, leach bed, oh, which will uh, greatly increase the vertical separation <coughs> distance to groundwater. As well, you can see that the current leach bed, leach pit, is at 50 feet uh, from the wetland, and the new leach bed will be outside of the hundred. Um, the um, the work in the buffer zone is uh, some fairly extensive grading, as you can see, um, in order to create that mound. Uh, from elevation, it's probably about a six foot mound because of the high ground water yeah. elevation. And that's the purpose of the project. I think it's a clear net benefit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a slam dunk to me. Sure. No kidding. Sure. So I will say, we don't have a file number for this yet for some yeah. unforeseen reason. Yeah. But I wanted to make sure that way, if there are any questions the next meeting, we can I'll mention that to Jeff. Get it out. Yeah. Like, DEP has it. It's on their list, so I don't know why they didn't yeah. get to it. But no concerns good. from the public on this one. Great. <laughs> Be public. Okay. Do we have a mo oh, Well, okay. We can't close <laughs> on them, so. Uh, we're to continue. We're, we're to continue. But it sounds sounds like a, a slam dunk. Okay. Thank very you. good. Yeah. All right, and then the good news, the applicant on 24 and 25 requested to continue to the Oh, oh thank God. Oh. They didn't have numbers either, too, so. Well, they also, they, 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 they also, um, oh, they get a, they get a gold star. He decided that he, he would, he would, he would hold an overnight. Okay. Uh, Amended. Oh, that's continued. So we have uh, certificates of compliance. All right, one second. I just need two seconds here, gang, to get paperwork out. Good there, gentlemen and ladies. All right. So the certificate of compliance for 7 Willard Street was um, the construction of a new porch and some stairs to accommodate the, uh, the structure making the flood zone um, and a little stone path everything is good grades checked out we'd recommend that that certificate could be issued okay. second. second all those in favor aye, aye. Any right. you're gonna have to lift the page on that one that one Sorry, passes unanimously lift the page lift the okay uh long 100 quidnet yes. road long 100 quidnet road Sorry, I just want to make sure I have this right. We uh, amended the, the permit there. Is this was for, um, yes, the construction of the dwelling. I want to make sure. Um, and then some landscaping and some window wells and some things that went in. Um, the window wells were after the fact, but they were given a permit. There weren't any monitoring components. We'd recommend that this one could also get issued. No issue. Thank you. All in favor? Okay. All right. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Nice. All right. Where is the condition? Take one. Pass okay. it down. No. Yes, you do. Won't be auto stapling on this. No, real staples. Well, the good news staples, is, is no, the more we issue, the shorter the list yes. gets. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Holy man, I, I will say is I, I did jokingly look over the last like five years of agendas and this is the most notices I think we've, we've ever done. I think done. this is a record I've never seen. This yeah, I, is yeah. That, is that how you're going to get your ability to eat Brussels sprouts? Yeah. She loves Brussels sprouts. Get out of here. Oh, my, my yeah. infant child yeah. literally <laughs> eats anything. She's a beast yeah. of an eater. She's not quite in the office, but I'm picturing him eating beets. Like she likes beets. Cool. Vegetables. Something's come and go a little bit, and she's weird. Like she'll eat apples at home. Yeah. Loves apples. Like if you're cutting it, she wants it. <laughs> she goes to dicker. 
Won't touch. Maybe they have the red delicious. No, it's it's food. what we pack from at oh. home. It's not the good. most peculiar thing. <laughs> so the first one is the Jemison. Which was the from the pool and like we're no, removing a like cabana. Enforced clearing. You never want to pool. So just to run through really quickly because there's some interesting. So we have the, the findings where um, did the commission find that the applicant has the open order of conditions SE 483127 that was issued as part of an enforcement action issued by the Conservation Commission for the restoration of disturbed areas. Um, and then a finding that the cabana is outside because if I don't get that zoning calls. So if you look at 19 in 19, 20, and 21 um, are kind of where we get to what we were talking about. So 19 is prior to the start of work. The plantings as required shall be installed in their entirety in a partial certificate of compliance filed to document that completion. Um, then prior to the start of work, the restoration area shall be marked with a fence that does not allow for further intrusion into that area. And then 21 is the should work on this permit commence prior to the completion of conditions 19 and 20. The commission shall open a hearing to revoke the permit. So. Good. If they don't do it, then you and they start the pool. When you revoke the permit, that's what I should work on this. On the pool. And then there's pool conditions. Yeah. What's that? Should we word it to say should work on the pool portion of this permit commence prior to the completion? You know, what I'll put. Why don't we we'll put should work on? And I'll put the DEP number. Should work on SE forty eight. Thirty-one sixty-five. All right. So there's no portion of SC thirty-one sixty-five that's on thirty-one. No. It's part of the completion of nineteen yeah, and I twenty. Got, I got you. All right. That makes sense. What's in the forty-eight sixty-five? Thirty-one sixty-five. It's actual. That's enough. We are mercifully a few steps away from the four thousand filing numbers. We're only at thirty-one hundred. So. <laughs> well, at this rate, we're doing 25. We'll be there before Ben's 25 off. a hearing. We'll be <laughs> what, what, what does that mean? Maybe I actually just asked a question about the file number. She thought I had said something in like oh, the 4,000. Yeah, right. Getting there. Yeah. We have a lot. There are not many communities that are into the 3,000s in Massachusetts. Aren't we lucky? Yes. <laughs> Keeps us busy. And then there's our standard pool conditions. Yeah. Um, and then the monitoring things are all tied to the other set of conditions. Second. Was it amended? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's yes. amended. It was amended. Thank you for All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. <laughs> we closed uh, 21 Crooked Lane, right? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't draft an order. <coughs> okay. I was a waiver project. Yep. Um, we were looking for a positive order on that. I thought the components are pretty standard, and then just kind of memorializing how that path is going to be restored and monitored as part of it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Are you concerned about the uh, yeah. cabana and patios? Yeah. So. I mean, I think I it's think just was the encroachment no, no, over yeah. time. I think we just. Yeah. I don't know that it's waiver appropriate to say, oh, well, I just couldn't have this if you didn't waiver it. Right. Well, you knew that the law had constraints. You know, I just think that's something we need to look at. Yeah. Um, well, we can draft it and go from there. I think it's pretty clear. Who would mind some type of infiltration for the patio? Is there anywhere to put it? Well, not my fault, not my concern. No, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's just. 
I just don't like the sheeting off these patios yeah. when they're close to wetland. Look at that other one. They all have the big patios mm -hmm. around. If it gets slick and put it beneath the patio. Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah, I mean, like I say, it's just, you know, yeah. put a drain and then infiltrate it. Yeah. Infiltrate it. Good idea. Infiltrate yeah. it. There are a lot of spots to do it. If you have a patio and you get right. drain in the sun areas of the night, just like pipe it to a side right underneath it and yeah. then they put it in the infiltrator and sand yeah. um, whatever they're setting material above it and set it and they're good. Yeah, they only got a hole there, so. Oh, please, yeah. I, I did offer during the meeting that we would add infiltrators. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand. I didn't mention it. I appreciate that. Yeah, I wasn't. Yeah, thanks. They can figure it out. Yeah, so they, yeah. <laughs> that's why. Yeah, it's what they pay people. Like I didn't want to design it for them. The people to know what they're actually doing. Okay. Uh, some. Uh, All right. Next one. Okay. Moving on. Right. We don't have this one yet. Thanks. Okay. Abrams Point Realty Trust. This was the. Thirty rabbit run. The dock and walkway yep. relocation. Mm -hmm. Um, I just put a condition that no lighting is allowed, just in case. Yeah. Um, and then photographs for the restored areas. And then I just put it to revegetate naturally. And I guess we can put the areas vacated by this morning shall be allowed to revegetate naturally or uh, American beach grass to be planted. Or, or, and. Or are you actually telling them they have they to They agreed to do. Yeah, we'll put an American beach grass to be planted within the coastal dune. Yeah. Yeah. Provide adequate coverage. As opposed to just putting three plugs in. <laughs> it's getting that way. You know, I mean. Mike will probably not like to look at the old path. They'll probably make it nice. Okay. All good? Okay. Well, what did you write? So we just have the areas vacated by the existing walkway shall be allowed to revegetate naturally. An American beach grass to be planted within the, the coastal dune for the entirety of the path. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Very good. Let's see. Pennant, Realty Trust. Oh, we can. That was another one. I know, I know we closed. That was the. I didn't draft an order for yeah. that because I wasn't sure where no. we were going. Did we um, continue it so we would go out there? No, that was Cathcart. We right. continued it. Cathcart. Um, that one we closed. Was that a, a. We're looking for a positive order on Pennant Realty Trust? What? Yeah. The Wilkinson yeah. style project? Yeah. 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 I feel like that thing needs a catchy the name Wilkinson now that it's right. patented. Yeah. Yeah. It needs a catchy yeah. name now that it's been patented. Right. Wilkinson Array just doesn't really get you there, you know? <laughs> Is it better? Yeah. 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 Good chain. Probably using them everywhere. All right, so we're on five. We're good. It's a good one. <laughs> Not sure he'd be stoked about that name. <laughs> Okay. I'd like to make a motion. Well, we don't need Oh, motion. we don't have it. We're on the red lane. Yeah, I'm tired. I'm tired. Thank God. No, it's almost eight. This is almost eight. Half my house is asleep already. So. I know. I don't know my phone is. <laughs> okay, uh, Loretta Lane nominee. Five Loretta Lane. You got that one? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, this had the, the no cultivars. It doesn't look like they were proposing any. Um, and then just kind of photo monitoring, and then a yearly log of all herbicide, pesticide, and fertilizer used on the site. Right. And then they had some additional monitoring protocols as part of their proposal. Yeah. 
Yeah. Who second? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That one passes unanimously. Okay. RJG Nominee Trust, 13 Crows Nest Way. This was the driveway relocation. Uh, it's the one that Ben was not sitting on. He is not sitting on. I made myself a note. I won't make him get up first. <laughs> Don't move. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anything we need to add to that. Need, it's pretty straightforward. What do you think? Yes. Well, I just didn't know if we should specify no irrigation is needed or just. It's just not needed. Shouldn't be needed. I would like to, like, to reserve the right to speak as a public to establishment and then for clarification yeah for clarification i'd like to have the have the uh, option to use it for establishment because i think it's important to get these plant communities established and then after three years they won't they shouldn't need it even after the first year but that's pretty typical i mean we usually allow it to for establishment mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, we could put a condition 21 that irrigation is only to be used to establish temporary communities. Temporary. Yeah, 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 for irrigation. That'd be perfect. 22. Oh, 21. 21. No permanent oh, irrigation. 21. <laughs> 21. It's easiest to write. Temp irrigation. Condition 22, keep a close eye on the contract. <laughs> <laughs> Get kickbacks. <laughs> <laughs> so as in 21, temporary irrigation may be used to establish the vegetation within restored areas. Right. Okay. Okay. Move to approve those amended. We have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That one passes unanimously with Commissioner Shampoo recused. So we should have put a condition on there that he had to report back to us at every meeting going forward. <laughs> and then we could have, like, just sucked him to stay onto the board that way. <laughs> uh, you got to come anyways, man. You got that project going on. There's one to study. That's going to pay what here. We're on to you. Yeah. Who we have is called, right? That Booyah was. Uh, continued. Yeah. Yeah. So the next one down would be 16. You'd be amazed the crazy names that people put onto LLCs and trusts for properties. This was the Harvey Jones Independence Harvey Cottage. Jones. 16 Old North Wharf. Oh, and I have a bad permit overview on that. Yeah. It needs yeah, to lose. Enough, no pool, lap pool. The construction of a dwelling pool, lap pool, and all of that should be taken out. needs to go away. Right. To the where it says isolated vegetative wetlands. Right. Sorry, when you type out like twenty of these things yeah, in a yeah. day, yeah. you miss some you miss some edits on the page. They all look alike anyways. They do. <laughs> you should try typing them sometimes. Okay. That's Okay, so as corrected, I guess. Um, <laughs> I couldn't think of any condition. Don't yeah, I don't. Removed <laughs> issue as amended. Second. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Oh, Commissioner Harrisman opposed. Okay, that passes with Commissioner Harrisman opposed. Okay. EPR Trust, your point of order. So you can tell I did it in order because this is the one that does have the lap pool. There's a pool apple. So I have our pool conditions. Times two. Yes, I made sure that I pluraled all of the pools. 
What can our developer questions. build to? My God. <laughs> wow. um, so, this, okay, so this one I'd like to sort of see that these slopes get properly visited. Right, and that, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm just picturing one big storm big wiping out the, yeah. You're right. <laughs> yeah, wiping yeah, yeah. it out. So, if, um, you know, I know it was talked about that they're going to put down the erosion blankets and then, uh, but is that actually memorialized in any kind of? We can put it. Thing? You can put. Um, so like, I think we call all it the erosion mesh or what do you call it? Stuff? Um, Yes. We can put all non-vegetated slopes, slopes yeah, right. shall be stabilized with erosion fabric until vegetation establishes. Shall be stabilized with erosion okay. fabric yeah. until vegetation is established. T-A-T-I. Should we need to put, like, natural erosion fabric? Yeah, stuff's like yeah. made out of... It's it mostly... It's all hemp. It's cool. It's like not yeah. 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 It goes, but it kind of disappears eventually. Most of what that would be. Yeah. What would apply it? How about a biodegradable? Biodegradable. Do, do they make it? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah I think most of those so are. So it shall be stabilized with biodegradable erosion fabric until vegetation is established. Yeah, it just stays in and sticks on the ground. This was the finger peer replacement. Mm -hmm. Right. So I. You got know. them in there already. Yeah. Not my first rodeo with piling replacement. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No issue was drafted. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimous. We live on an island that has a gajillion pilings. Thank you. Uh, Gibbs for Galen <laughs> Ab. I'm assuming. Right. We have no grade changes here. <laughs> I put no fill is permitted by the order. Yeah. Yeah, and this one, anything hazardous, right, needs to be. Oh. Yeah, so yeah. Um, yeah. any potentially good common sense. They have hazardous it materials. <laughs> Well, they're still putting it on. Um, right shall yeah. be stored <laughs> for the site visit. It's upwards. Above yeah. the flood. Add a 21 that any impervious surface runoff generated by the site shall be contained on the site. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Is that possible. What's that? <laughs> Is that possible? I think so. Yeah. Okay. I think a lot of grass area. Yeah. Sure. And I mean, I think this is rewriting the right stuff, but people need to start getting creative with stormwater planters and oh, yeah. managing their stormwater. Water gardens. Yeah. <coughs> For 19, how about adding uh, all grade change? So no fill or grade change is permitted by the table. Uh, sort of a 
helps emphasize it. Yes. Right. Okay. Everyone happy with that? Mm -hmm. We have a motion to approve as amended. Approve as amended. We have a second. Second. Doing all the. In Who's in favor? <laughs> Anybody opposed? Yeah. Passes unanimously. <laughs> yeah, I get We're close. We're close. I know. I know. CRM management, seventy-three Holbert. This is the pool. This is. The pool. I don't think I need to say anything else. <laughs> the pool. The pool that requires divers. Refrigeration. Um. Divers. <laughs> It's not a requirement that they're required to file the just a free the request. town there. I couldn't really think of any other mm. conditions for it really, but the DPW may have additional yeah. conditions for them. But and they're proposing to filter yeah. it and pump it to the storm drain. Right? right. Should there be like an if oh. they're pumping more than three weeks or yes, like, um, we don't want it. This order <laughs> permits pumping for three weeks um, if additional time is needed. Um, the applicant must request an extension in writing to the commission. Hmm. It, per their like DPW <coughs> permit, does that include monitoring how much water is coming out of these pumps? Or is it just like, hey, you can pump, whatever comes out, comes out? I will honestly say they don't really monitor the volume you that can't much. record it really. It's, yeah. It's just, it's going to pump like crazy at the beginning, and as the water draws down, the pumps are designed that they can just keep running. they slow. Even though the rate is much reduced. so. I mean, you'd have to take the maximum capacity of the pump. And then and, multiply and it by the time. Yeah. It's, it's a hard yeah. number to come about. But yeah. They have expensive <coughs> engineers on hire. They can do that. <laughs> you can, you oh, can get a, a, a to flow know how gauge, much water. Yeah. which is uh, usually it's, uh, like a nuclear density gauge, and then you have to get a you know, permit for that. And <laughs> we used to have them on dredges when we were doing Gotta a a PCB jobs. You had to right. actually know what went through the pipe. No, so no. you had to have a nuclear license, and uh, it's crazy. Is there any a waiver nuclear license? license? You had to take a test. Yeah, you had to take a test and go to the class. No, because it's not within a nuclear device. buffer zone to And then when you stored it at the company I worked for, you had to have a special spot for it with lines, and the fire department had to come every year and inspect it. And, wow. Yeah. Crazy for this little thing. Do you wear lead BVDs? <laughs> It measures flow exactly. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> all right. Focus. 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 We're so close to the end. Okay. So. Uh, so, do we have a motion to motion on Seventy Three Holbert Ave as amended? Yeah, motion to second. Yeah. Absolutely. To approve. Uh, do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, passes unanimously. Unanimously. 48 Wall Street. Is this where we want to add the permeable deck and the trenching? Yeah. yeah. So I have a 20 that all runoff shall be contained on site and no permanent dewatering is permitted by this order. Yeah. Uh, you feel 21. Like well, we can do 21 the area the deck is beneath the deck. And the deck permeable. itself <laughs> shall be permeable. Yeah. And that's a building code issue, anyway, as well. Yeah. Other than that, I think that pretty well. I actually think they're getting more pervious surface on the site because it's mostly yes. bricks right. now. They yeah. The brick. yeah. And most of that yeah. brick is leaving. <clears throat> exactly. And then again, there's no fill. You won't be permitting the crawl space again. I hope not. Or do we want to add grade change? Just to Caveat. 
I'm kind of curious, how do you define runoff? Is it just from rain? <laughs> Rainwater runoff or what? And I'll put yeah, all. I mean, technically, runoff comes from rainwater that doesn't infiltrate. Well, and I'll so put all impervious surface. Flow, 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 that flow. runs off your water. So that's yeah, that's flood water. That's a body. That would but be considered that. Uh, Here, I'll, I'll just put all impervious surface runoff, uh, excluding flood waters. <laughs> You've got a lot of property. What if it mixes with the flood water and then runs off? Let's <laughs> <laughs> get a free ride, man. <laughs> I'll have you come down and sort through which one is which. <laughs> well, I'm just out, I mean, it's technical, but yeah, I'm kind of curious. I think we're being kind of broad here. Well, yes, Run, yeah, runoff, though, like if you think about the water cycle, runoff. runoff would be water from precipitation right. that doesn't infiltrate. It's right. different than. Coastal storm flood. water, yeah, right. coastal flood water. And it I should be their responsibility to hold the first yeah. inch per hour of rainwater on site. It should be everybody's. Um, and we need to look at the flood zone even more carefully with that because of the two additions of water from rain and flooding. And increased building space, little garages, all of that impacts the flood storage in that area. So. I think that's pumping out all these basements. Yeah. Last year, it was crazy was last year. Oh, yeah. But part of that is, is no, us No, that, that would be things. limiting how many calls I was getting. It was like all day. Well, if we really were smart, we wouldn't go out any building down there anyway. It's kind of crazy to build on the right. flood zone. I mean, it's, it's just going to get worse over time, too. So I will also say that the, the town is developing regulations specific to deal with sump yeah. pumps and pumping. Yeah, right. Um, that are well underway. Yeah. No yeah. pun intended. I'd buy the lowest point and build a moat. It'd be cool. Yeah, I just need a tidal. We need one of those like lazy river parks. <laughs> just a moat you know, doesn't float around. It's a right, fish really. around my house all, all, all the time. Lazy okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So move to approve as amended. Do we have a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Passes unanimously. Okay. Eight bishops rise. Eight bishop tries. Thirty-one. This was the the lot where we don't really have a lot in jurisdiction. This was the well and like the corner of the fence, mm -hmm. um, and a little corner of the dwelling. Um, so there is a finding that details the other components that are outside. And then I honestly didn't really have any conditions. So is the pool outside? Our pool is outside. Yeah. Yes. So we can't actually put a provision on it. Nope. This is the one no. Brian presented that was part of the other subdivision. Yes. So that's Very ironic. So they could be pumping the water from the pool into the wetland, and we have no jurisdiction. No, because they, you can't they discharge can it into, into the wetland. Well, but they're outside the hundred, so we can't, what my point being, we can't, can't put a provision. Can't, no, saying but they would they, be in violation of the act right, if they, if if you they did them. it. Right, 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 right. But I just, yeah. it, it does seem a bit ironic. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, people also pump their pools right into their well had recharge, and that's mm. illegal as well. I actually, we have, yeah. the town has encountered people who have actually pumped their pools into their well. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> like <laughs> into really the well what? itself. <laughs> Dumb. Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> it, believe me, if, if you can think of, of the potential to do something, Someone has tried. I love it. <laughs> but we, right. we, we, a, we, we had a site where someone had run that taken off the cap to their well and ran a hose from their pool into the well. Did they understand it was the well and not like a septic they were running into? Because I, I feel like they must have been confused. Oh, uh, no. Go ahead. You don't it. always ask questions. <laughs> you just go, oh, my God. Okay. And just okay. Okay. deal with it. Okay. Move to, move to approve this draft. Okay. Okay. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Oh, trust me. 262 Pulpus nominee trust. This was the the last one that we did and the last one we have to do. Yeah. Um, this is Brian's project for the crawl space um, entryway fixing, and then the the game court that's outside of jurisdiction, oh, yeah. but the silt fence to install it is going within jurisdiction. <laughs> Game court. So we're, we're approving the cell fence. In theory, yes. 
Oh, we did one in condition There's, 19. There was yeah. the little um, opening in the back of the... That silt fence. Silt fence by the bridge. Yeah. Silt fence be installed on the route of travel to the game court um, when the roadway is within 25 feet of a resource area. Gives you a just in case. Yeah. So if you're in the 25, get a hand silk fence. Crossing the bridge, you gotta have silk fence. You're within the 25. Okay. Move to approve is amended. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes in the hand. Oh. Yes. It's the last one I got, man. Yes. Um, just real quickly. Good job, guys. Um, yeah. I, I do. I did lie. We we do have one more. Just really quickly, we did not close two fourteen Pulpas Road, but it's the one that Art presented right in the end. Did you guys want a positive order for that when we have the file number? Yeah. That was the septic, septic upgrade, upgrade and upgrade. replacement. Yeah. 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 Makes With sense. Yeah. 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 Yes. I typically draft projects that are just septic upgrade, even if there are waivers involved, because yeah. it's an upgrade. And I've usually talked to the Board of Health about it. And everyone's usually very happy. Okay. So, everyone happy with the minutes? I think Mr. Mayo, who's been waiting patiently for oh, three and a half <laughs> hours, um, he was looking for some clarification on the minutes when it regarded the order okay. of conditions yep. for Vineyard Wind as it related to condition number 21. Yep. If you guys were seeking something different than notification or I guess what clarification on what level of notification you guys expected. I encapsulate that correctly? Um, yeah, I, I think uh, at the conclusion of the meeting um, we, we had resolved that, it, that we would provide uh, notification to the town in advance of work. Um, in what? And the, the condition is written, I think, uh, inadvertently uh, provides a, uh, requires a, a, obtaining some sort of authorization uh, from, the, from the town. So what does that mean? Can, can we, we just acknowledge can, that you're starting? Can we read it or, out again? Well, I'm, I'm can I curious. Just, can I just add one thing? Can you come forward? Okay. Yeah. What? No offense, I was watching yeah, all these. Read, can we read, read the really condition? <laughs> okay. Yeah. More than the camera. Yeah, sure. <laughs> And that's, I need best, all the paper to read in. It's the best place to be. Yes. So I think for the, the minutes discussion, it's just clarifying for the minutes so we can clarify in these minutes what the corrected minutes. We won't actually, you don't actually really correct the minutes for this. You're just making new minutes because the minutes are the minutes. But um, you provide clarity to that now, which would get into these minutes. That's the most confusing explanation ever, but that's just what it's happening. It's been on, I'm very impressed. This is it. I'm Long, long roster, I'm sorry. Oh, no. I'm amazed you stayed. <laughs> yeah, well, it's his job. Yeah, had to. Yeah, yeah, had to. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, my, so overtime my, my, yeah, my, my clock ended long ago. I've yeah. been here for free for a while today. So, oh, um, so I, I, I think there was some confusion. So, the original condition, and I'll, I'll try to bring it up here, that was written. You should. Um, I know I have it. Here, let me just grab it. Sorry, I was uh, getting through the rest of the last like 22 draft orders. So the condition that was originally written, 21, is prior to the installation, the applicant shall provide written acknowledgement from the town and or county of Nantucket that demonstrates understanding of the work to occur within municipal waters. This acknowledgement does not have the ability to overturn the order of conditions. And the discussion that was had, I know we use the word notification a lot, and I think Vineyard Wind is just looking for clarity through the minutes on what that was, what you that guys means. were expecting that to be. Because we kind of referred it to council. Um, so I think. Yeah. What is, when they said, what is council? They, they felt that that fell within that. And I think there's some disagreement between the applicant and council that 
the condition as it's written, and I don't want to summarize his opinion because he's standing here, is um, goes beyond notification. And Town Nantucket Council thinks that it falls within. Um, so I think they're hoping to get some clarification what was being sought by the commission. I mean, this is just asking for in writing the current condition, right? It's asking for clarification. Right, he is. But I, I see the current condition as being similar to what we talked about. It yeah, I mean, it's we're, written, so. we're not we're not asking for approval. From, yeah, so I don't. I but if they can't saying. start work unless the town gives them written response, oh, okay. all the town has to do is not do anything, and they can basically negate our order. That's what I don't like about it. The town just sits on this and says we're not going to respond to this letter. But isn't can't you be considered the town? Natural Resource Office? Well, I think that's not very clear either. The time <laughs> well, it, it, the I, I, I think if, if there was a, a specified party for that, I mean, it. it I see everyone's point. I, I totally see where our council comes from and says they feel they meet it. I see their point that it it's a little vague. I get where it's a little unclear. Um, and I'm wondering if there's a way to... Is this on town property? I mean, is the town own the land under the ocean or who does? The land is technically owned by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The Commonwealth has ceded some jurisdictional control in limited fashion to the town. Did anybody, who signed off on the, the order, on the notice? So the way the state officially signed off on the notice by issuing out their, um, the FEIR, just the, the final environmental impact report that authorizes the filing of permits as part of that application. So the state has signed off on it. Well, in my opinion, um, we are the board that governs this type of activity. And if we, if we representing the town of Nantucket approved this project, I don't see what the board of selectmen or, or Libby or whoever has to do with it except they should be notified. I don't see why they should have to approve it by responding to it or whatever. Does the town council feel this is a necessary? I think they feel that some <clears throat> level of, of contact to, to so, our executive needs. So can needs you just send certified mail and like once they get it, they got it. They've been there. And they've <laughs> seen it. Once they sign it, I think if, if, I mean, if it's going to be notification, I think there needs to be yeah. some. I think for the applicant, too, in this case, if it's notification, I think it should be very clear what notification is. And I don't think notification necessarily has to be, you know, some sort of sign off or, or something mm -hmm. crazy. Right. It could be something as simple as Vineyard Wind goes and then public comment at a select board meeting and says we're starting work and this is what we're doing and that's notification it can be it can be that the simple. Act, basically the act of doing it and it'll be honest it's just letting know. them know what's going on right and i think that would satisfy notification so i mean i think maybe a way to to meet a little bit to make more sense is i think if if it goes notification i think clarifying what notification is expected so like in the act you have to notify a butters, you have to notify by certified mail return receipt. So I think if if the board was looking more towards notification and, and was misunderstood, if you said notification has to be provided to the select board as part of a, a regular meeting, they could simply go under public comment and say, we're starting work, and that meets that requirement. So if that's what you guys were, were thinking and that was there, um, that would be helpful, but that's, just some ideas. I mean, you could. I was thinking like an email to your office saying, hey, we're starting. <laughs> well, they have to I file a start. They I have to file. I kind of thought, thought it, yeah. I well, they have to file a start yeah. work form with us regardless because that's a requirement yeah. through the regular conditions of the order condition. Any project does. So if you're building a house or constructing a geotube or putting in a, a, a linear cable, you have to file the form with us that says we're starting work because it has information like who the contractor is to call if there's an issue or things that are going on. I think it's also making sure that 
everyone is in the know that work is commencing. I think, I think when I read that condition and, and, and think about it at 8.30 at night, the intent is to make sure that there's no, no one that is left out from knowing that the project is going forward. And I think we should require Jeff or Joe to forward that to the BOS and the Libby mm -hmm. so that they know that and they get it from Jeff and we have a, a reliable person that says, no, I gave it to the town. Because mm -hmm. I'm just afraid this could get political if, you know. If, yeah, I wasn't looking at, I, you know, I first interpreted personally as sort of just the, the selectman would, would oversee town property, but, you know, the definition is, is murky when you talk about property on this one. So, no, I, didn't, you know, just a notification. I wasn't exactly looking for anything, too. Yeah, I, mean, I just thought they were either going to send something written in the mail. Yeah, I actually, for some reason, yeah. thought you guys had presented something to the selectmen before. We've, we've presented the selectmen on, I think, half a dozen occasions, and we've had some pretty extensive conversations with town staff. Yeah. Uh, over several months, I personally. On this particular project. On, uh, but not this particular aspect uh, this, of the project. Well, the, the, the NOI specifically um, was discussed. Well, so the, the town has designated a, a kind of yeah. Liaison, the energy coordinator. Okay. Um, so that was presented on, I believe, this early December, um, when we were, you know, sort of gearing up to potentially file this. Um, shortly before filing, we had an email exchange. I think uh, okay. uh, probably around the middle of, of January okay. that we were planning on filing. The energy coordinator was also here. So they're uh, well aware of what yeah. this project includes. Is this really <laughs> about the fact that they've got two options, and one of them avoids Nantucket waters altogether? Really, just letting Nantucket know that yes, we are going to take the Nantucket option. So be prepared to see our work out there. I think it's a big project. They want to know, like, hey, it's starting. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. we can satisfy the technical aspects of notification through furnishing documents to whomever. And I, I would say, sort of off paper, that that you know, we're obviously more than happy and have extended that to the board of selectmen that we you know present on this and other issues to them again. But you want some formal commitment here. But you're asking for a formal commitment here to clarify what you felt could be a misunderstanding. Yeah, and what I'm, I, I think I'm getting from the board a, a fair amount is that, um, that that notification was the intent there, and, and that's what, what the transcript, or at least the video, uh, indicated. So providing that is, is, is of course, you know, of course. Reasonable. Yeah. So if 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 that's what the intent was clarifying that now um, I don't think you need to take a vote but the the intent was notification to the town right that okay. work was work was beginning I'm happy with that I really didn't think this was so I, I guess I would say to clarify that condition that you would simply put something that written notification be provided to the town of Dantucket that work is commencing with the date of work starting and I I think just to throw in there, you should put that that notification be provided to both the Natural Resources Office and then Town Administration, and that was the intent of that condition. Yeah. And uh, so, the, I mean, this, I think this can be resolved through a, through a correction. Through, yep. Through an admin correction. Because yeah. I have a couple other typos I found since then too. Yeah. So, but we, so we can. Much more yes. Oh, it's a typo. Perfect. Yes. Um, if there's an order that goes out that doesn't have a typo, it's. There's so many little boxes and things. No, I did so, um, Yeah, there's no. One. So I just want to make sure that it's clear that 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 was. This is really kind of a discussion focused to, to Andy, Ernie, Ashley, and Dave because they were the ones that voted on it. Mm -hmm. That was the intent was to notify. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I don't think we were looking to have approval for anything like that. Okay, not, I and mean, that's, given the started. clarification of the whole property aspect, no, I, I'm not looking for approval. Yeah, I think I think we find ourselves in the same vein as private property with the wetland. Company. Well, I, you know, we, I, in my mind, we have a very huge project on the east side of the island that has to go through the selectmen because it involves town property. Right. Yeah. So, the definition of property in my mind was confused on this one, but like I said, this is the better venue to be bringing all this stuff up. I know that you and I only communicated on emails. Yeah. yeah. Don't okay. Get my phone so, we'll, so we we can make that that change. I, I won't be making that change tonight. But we'll make <laughs> it, it might not in be the right. morning. Can I ask for? So I'm, I am at this hour going to be spending the night on the island. Uh, is yeah. it possible to get that sometime in the earlier part of tomorrow? Um, yeah, I think with with that clarification, especially if you have the original, or I think we could probably have that done. 
if you wanted to get off the island probably by 9 or 9.30, probably that done. So do they need to sign off on it? No, there's a, okay. it, it's just changing the, the findings and conditions page to the order. I think that's, that's doable. Too. Yeah, so there's the ability to, to submit a subsequent one um, with a tech technical correction. Yeah. Occasionally mm -hmm. you'll find a date, you know, just word misplaced or date yeah. misplaced is problematic. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, thank you for the, the, the clarification. I think there was some confusion for everybody. Great. All right. Well, yeah. Yes. Thanks for coming over. Yeah, thanks for hanging yeah. out. We still we still do need to though uh, approve the minutes from that meeting. We didn't oh. actually get to that part too. So, okay. As as the, as clarified. Uh, as amended. No. Are there minutes as minutes, right? Right. So the the, the minutes, minutes are the are minutes correct. from the meeting. Minutes the conversation correct. is still correctly encapsulated. You've simply clarified the minutes in the meeting of the twentieth for the sixth. So. You'd still be approving the minutes of the sixth, as clarified on the twenty. Twenty. It, it's one of those things like you can't go back yeah. in time and change it. the words that were said. No. For what Terry is just recording minutes for what what, what is mean? said. You can't change that, but you can clarify it. Right. It doesn't change those no, no. minutes directly. She wrote, it's, she wrote them down correctly. Correct. Okay. Okay. So this is not Terry's fault. So this was misinterpretation. Ridiculous from English language. No. I, okay. Yeah. Okay. Move to approve the minutes. Clarification of the, of the minutes. That's clarified. Yes. Clarify the minutes of the. What was the date? Sixth. The sixth. Okay. The sixth. Okay. okay. On the twentieth. Do we have a second? Second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Very good. Well, Passes. Those of us who are present. Yeah, are right. Oh, yeah. Oh, fact, never mind. All those present. Yeah, right. There are only four of us. That's right. Oh, my God. That was a funny meeting. All okay. right, Nate. Thank you, folks. Thanks a lot. The brain tea's no, no, that's okay. fine. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Okay. We can skip the rest if you guys want to. I don't think there's much. Yeah. I hung out in case there was something interesting. <laughs> <laughs> How many meetings have you been to? Well, that was. But I just mean in the rest. Okay. All right. So, uh, just to, to get to my part, I just want to remind everyone: uh, our next meeting is in three weeks. Yeah. Um, I know we've been continuing stuff to that all along. And what date is that then? But our next meeting is really. Yeah. Is the tenth. We do have a meeting. We have we do have a meeting on Monday for the bluff. This yeah. Monday. Oh yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. There's yeah. steam rolling us with police. The twenty fifth. Yes. And then as another reminder that the following week on Monday is annual town meeting. Yay. I always encourage everyone to attend. Especially this time around for Article 71. Well, we, yeah, yes. I hate to say I'm going to be off island. Like like dog. Dog. Well, I know. Let's, <laughs> yeah. my you can call in. We don't have, we, we, we don't have <laughs> I, any specific articles listed on the agenda, so let's refrain from discussing that in this part of the meeting. The article that can't and be And don't named. sit together in town meeting. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I can't. <laughs> so, okay. So I, I don't think we need anything else. I think we've, there's no enforcements we have to worry about, right? Um, not we have a couple, not but they're, they're not nothing that's okay, going cool. anywhere. That's the only ones I was thinking about. <laughs> okay. I, I, you know what? I can issue them out, and then we can ratify them. Oh, good. To get them out there. We trust you. We're, we are looking into that. That one got bumped for the one on the end of Aurora Way that we sent some stuff out on, the one on Polywog um, that we've also sent some stuff out on. And then... Um, Washing Pond, yes, there's that one that we sent out um, for the water company um, is looking into that one a little bit because that's on their property. And they have contracted to do some work there and they are sorting out whether it was their contract or not. So I kind of turned it to Mark and said get back to me. Um, so I'll catch up with him. Uh, we have a new one out in Quidnet that we found on the certificate of compliance. Um, so that will be back in front of us. 290 Pulpus has already been issued. We're waiting for a response on them. So we have a lot of them. We'll go through on the deck. <laughs> the landscapers are back at it, so you're going to see are. more people. They are. They're like cutting and clipping and aerating and everything. They're going to start fertilizing.